Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. NHL trade deadline 2024 live coverage starts now from now until 4 p.m. Eastern. Welcome, everyone, to our annual coverage here on the channel. Great to be with everybody. As we've had a lot of live streams over the last few days, we've had quick breaking news data casts so often. Uh, I almost couldn't breathe the last couple of days, all the trades that happened. Most recently, a tire to fully trade that happened earlier today. We'll start breaking down all the trades that have happened and the rumors that may happen. We got TSA. We got Sportsnet. We got everything going on here on the side. Most recently, the Predators just acquired Jason Zucker from the Coyotes. The Predators making a little bit of a push in the Western Conference. Perfect, Joe. Thank you for letting me know about that. Also, officially, this is the final. Here, I, let me squeak it a few more times. Let me squeak it a few more times. The final ever video with my squeaky folding chair that I've had the last four years. The new chair has been purchased and should, oh, there it is. There you go. There you go. Should be uh, arriving tomorrow. So can't wait to have that in there. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start breaking down the trades that have happened since we last went live with the Defoli deal. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and look at the, oh, let me just make sure I share the stream. Then we'll go ahead and also look at the deals that have happened most recently and looking towards the deals ahead. So thank you for joining us here this afternoon, everybody. Uh, something I'm going to probably start doing is I think we're going to do for any donations that come in, I'm going to start keeping track and we're going to do a, a drawing. And we've been talking about people who donate and they get to have a created player. I think what's going to happen is that if you donate a certain amount, let's say between two and five dollars, you will be entered into a draw to get a created player in NHL franchise. And we'll probably do that because if I give one to every donation, it'll probably be too many. And if I put a dollar amount on it, I feel cheap to say, oh, well, thanks for the five, but you got to give 10. So I think we're going to do that kind of thing. Oh, that's it. Squeak that chair. There you go. There's that squeak. There it is. There's that good squeak. All right. So the trades that have happened so far, let's go ahead and check out the screen right here. After the Toffoli deal, we, uh, there was before that, there was the Kuznetsov trade. Before that, there was the, um, sorry, after that, there was the Pat Maroon trade, Jason Zucker trade, Kyle Pozo trade, Chad Ruedel trade. So we'll be breaking that all down. I got my, uh, my AGMs helping me out over on the Discord server as well at the same time. And we'll do our best to keep it all breaking news as it happens. The insiders are here on TSN as well with uh, and Sportsnet going at the same time. So let's go over to the Jay Fresh cards and start breaking down the last couple trades that happened, starting off with the Evgeny Kuznetsov deal. Now, Kuznetsov was waived earlier this week. He was put on waivers and nobody took him and is, what, seven, what, seven million? Is a seven million dollar cap hit? Is that what he has? No one had claimed him. Uh, Jim Neal, wake up. Vassy mental day today. Real trouble keeping up myself. Oh, I hear you. I see what you're putting out there, Vassy. All the, with all the prospects coming as a, uh, on the on NHL. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Respect to you, my friend. We're both really uh, trying to keep up. Let's scroll down to the Kuznetsov deal to start it off with here. A trade for some WD-40 for that chair. <laughs> no more WD-40. We're getting a brand new chair. Should be in tomorrow. So I should be able to start recording with it as soon as this weekend. So we broke down into fully trade already. Everly extended in Seattle. Now we'll go ahead and look at blah, 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 blah. Down to Evgeny Kuznetsov. Oh, 7.8. Perfect. Now it's 3.9. No idea how Carolina is affording it, though. We'll look at that in a moment as well. So Evgeny Kuznetsov, acquired by the Carolina Hurricanes, is a pure playmaking center whose deficiency in pretty much every area of the game except passing and oddly enough killing, killing penalties has made him one of the most negative impact play drivers in the last in the league in the past two seasons. Sounds like a perfect reclamation project for a team like the Carolina Hurricanes, right? So over the last three years, he used to be around that 70, 75th percentile of wins above replacement. But in the last couple of years, it has fallen off a cliff, not dropped dramatically, fallen off a cliff. So the last couple of years, he's been pretty much of no value in terms of wins above replacement. He's not providing value in and of himself in the first percentile of offense on even strength, first percentile of defense at even strength. The primary assists are still up there. That's great. Somehow he's keeping that up. But even though even his finishing, even his offense overall, everything is just everything's taken a huge dip the last couple of years. Is it all because of personal reasons? Is it because of Washington declining? Is it because Ovechkin hasn't been finishing those passes? Maybe. Because let's look at the metrics over here. It's not just is he getting the primary assists and the team isn't scoring. If I look at this right here, Jay Fresh says this is a pretty compelling one. The Canes clearly see the passing, which is okay this season and quite strong the previous two, as an element they're lacking. I guess they hope they can either insulate him or get him to work a bit harder in other areas. So interesting to see they the Hurricanes go out and acquire 
two division rival players in Jake Gensel from the Penguins and Evgeny Kuznetsov from the from the Capitals. Not just players, but top six players in the of their of their rivalries of the last uh, half decade plus. So it's a big acquisition in terms of just the context. So somehow he's killing a lot of penalties. But if we look at the chance assists, 69th percentile, skating speed, chance contributions, primary assists, there's a few things that are above average or above average, rush shot assists, high danger passes, but a lot of things that are way below where you'd want it to be. In zone offense, um, four check involvement at the absolute bottom of the NHL this season. Uh, shots off high danger passes in zone shots like don't i guess you couldn't look at the shouldn't always look just at the shots but if you look at the primary shot assists at 40 that's a bit more reassuring because that's what nickname should be um, i hear you i hear you that's what some people were probably calling him at this time uh he finally got the caps past the second round yeah he did so he did a lot for the team historically now if we look at this right here this is his shooting score versus his passing score so kuznetsov over the last few years Let's see. He used to be shooting score per 60 and passing score per 60. So he kind of had 2021, 20, jump up to 21, 22, back to 22, 23, now down here to 23, 24, where he's still, of course, in that passer quadrant, but he's moving towards a bit more of the average league average in terms of shooters but still not quite up here as dual threat as he once was. Never been quite a shooter, but still, just to say. So let's start breaking down a bit more on Kuznetsov. First round pick back in what? 2000, man, we're going back, eh? 2000 and what? 10. First round pick in 2010 and uh, 26th overall. He got his Stanley Cup ring, 32 points in 24 games in that run to the Stanley Cup final, in that Stanley Cup victory. Uh, I don't think I see the Maple Leafs making another move, Leafs fan. I wouldn't be surprised, but I, if I had to guess one way or the other, I would say no. Uh, 568 points in 723 games in the NHL. He has definitely slowed down this year on pace for under 40, 55 the year prior, but point per game for that. And at his best in the year in which he was almost the Conn Smythe winner, 83 points in 79 games, Kuznetsov at his best is a premier passer in the NHL. Absolutely. So the Hurricanes are going to try to get that back a little bit. He, if we go look at the stats over here, Dallas, I think Dallas has to do something just because of, the, of how much the rest of the league is doing. You think Dallas would have to be doing something. I don't know whether they run him at center or wing since they have also Aho, Kakinemi, Stahl. But if they put him with Stahl and Fast, I'll definitely get focused on offense. I would say they probably replace Jack Drury with him. If I look at the middle six here in Carolina, if my first line center is Aho and my third line center is Jordan Stahl. Give me a second here. We'll pull up the lines here on Carolina Hurricanes. Well, let's see. Thanks, everybody, for joining so far. I know there's a lot of options that you can listen to on Trade Deadline Day, but I appreciate everybody who's taken a second to drop by, say hello, add their thoughts as we go. And there you go. Kuznetsov is already in. This used to be Jack Jury just a couple hours ago. So put Kuznetsov on that second line. Give him Nate Chass or whoever else. Um, I'd, I'd prefer to see Seth Jarvis with Kuznetsov, a guy who's going to be uh, like Jarvis who shoots with a guy who passes in Kuznetsov. I'd prefer to see that. Um Maybe Kakanyemi's been finding a new part of his game, but this year, you know, down on that fourth line, it's too bad. Kakanyemi, I feel like Kuznetsov, getting Kuznetsov not only for this year, but also for next year, plus Jordan Stahl, your captain, plus Aho there. Kakanyemi is getting real crowded real quick in Carolina for Kakanyemi and that cap hit that he is uh, carrying as well. That's that's the thing. So Kuznetsov, I would think, plays second line center, but definitely middle six guy there for the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, what does it mean when we look at the salary cap situations for these two teams and what else could they do today? So if we look at the uh, what's it really on here on TSN? Seconds, so, talking about yeah, Curtis Lazar. Ah, they're just having some sort of fun sketch. Never mind. Sorry, I was trying to see what they were saying over on, uh, on TSN. Where's Carolina? Metropolitan Carolina Hurricanes. If you're a Canadians fan data, what can I expect out of Joel Edmondson? You can expect a, a great, uh, a nitty-gritty playoff contender, big guy in front of the net who's going to be doing a lot of things well if he stays healthy, especially for the playoffs. He's the kind of guy you need in the, in the postseason. Definitely. So you can expect a lot of good things out of Joel Edmondson at his best. But with the injury trouble... 
with the way he'll be utilized, maybe in Toronto, maybe he might be having to play a bit too over his head if he needs to play those big minutes. I don't know. He's shown the ability to do it with the Canadians on their run to Stanley Cup final, but now it's a couple of years later. So the Hurricanes now have current cap space at 1.977 million. They've been playing around quite a bit. They will have to figure out what happens when Jake Gensel comes back from the IR. They do have anti Ranta sent down. They did put uh, Tony D'Angelo on waivers, right? So that helps out a little bit with the cap hit on the team itself. But uh, in general, uh, where's that 3.9 million coming from? They're they're pulling some magic to make it happen. Uh, I wouldn't call it circumvention or anything like that, but they're, they had to put good players on waivers. They had to put down uh, Ranta and D'Angelo, both on waivers. Good, maybe an overstatement, but they had to put NHL caliber players on waivers to make these things happen. And here they are currently doing it. They have the big extension kicking into Aho next season. Shveshnikov, Kutkinyemi, Stahl, uh, Orlov, Slavin, Burns, all players who are signed on for at least next year. They'll have a lot of money next season. They can figure out what they're going to do with Shea, Pesci, again, like D'Angelo, Martinuk. Uh, they got to sign Natchez, though, to a deal. They got to figure out what's going to happen with Jake Gensel. It's going to be tough. It's, and yeah, they, I, the, Le- the Leafs fans saying, I can't believe the, pe- the Penguins couldn't get a guaranteed first for Gensel. I think it's because of the value of the prospects that they brought back. A lot of people are saying, a lot of things that are just false, I think, about the prospects. Bottom six forwards, ceiling, top nine ceiling, third line guys. I think Koivin could be a top six centerman. I think both Lucius and Panamara can be middle six forwards. Of course, that's best case scenario, but you can't be say, saying that of those three guys, they all have ceilings of third liners. I think that is a gross overstatement. Uh, CBJ fan, I expect any moves from the Jackets today. Provov, Provov on his way out. I could see Provov, maybe even Merzlikens. If there's a team looking for a goalie who misses out on Jacob Markstrom, now that they got Malcolm Subban in there as well, it's possible. Jack saying, Data, what le- left D core would you rather have? Ottawa with Shabbat, Sanderson, and Chikrin, Buffalo with Dalene, Power, and Byram, and Samuelson, or the Leafs with like 12 mid left Ds? <laughs> At full health, Ottawa, Shabbat, Sanderson, and Chikrin, those are all potential top pair guys. Uh, Buffalo depends because if, if Dalene, Power, and I don't know. That's tough. Dalin Power Byram is very tight with Ottawa at Shabbat Sanderson Chikrin, I think. It's tough because the one that's more proven and one that's more potential, that's tough. But I wouldn't say the Leafs uh, are up there as well. None of those guys can be top pair aside from Morgan Riley. So sorry, back to finishing off the Kuznetsov deal here. The, the Capitals now retain salary. Their final time that they can retain, they retained on Edmondson, they retained on Mantha, they retained on Kuznetsov. They can't retain any more. They have... 9.5 million in cap space so they can eat a bad contract but they can't do any third-party brokering retention from the carolina hurricanes they got a third in 2025 which i think is pretty fair value for a guy that you were trying to bury and get rid of for whatever you could get when you think about a similar situation like verana last season he went through waivers nobody wanted him they got a seventh right so we got a third out of kuznetsov that's pretty good it could, could come back to be a huge slam dunk steal for the hurricanes but whether or not that happens, the fact of the matter was he was down in Hershey. Nothing was probably happening with him. They get a third round pick. So it, it works out. Oh, yeah. There's always some unexpected trades. Like the middle stat for Byram trade was pretty unexpected. There's always going to be some unexpected ones. We saw Toffoli. We're expecting whoever else. Like maybe uh, we're expecting Dumba. We're, ex- we're expecting Zucker, which just happened as well. There's a few that are ex- expected, but... Yeah, Zucker. We're going to go ahead and break down Zucker. I think that's just about it for what we can break down on the Washington Capitals. The big question will be who fills that spot next season because they still have Ovechkin, they still have Carlson, they still have Darcy Kemper sign on to big contracts. Is Hendrix Lapierre your first line center now? I don't know about that. Connor McMichael, Dylan Strom is your three. Are those are your three centers in there. So the the Carolina, the, excuse me, the Washington Capitals have to think that we we can make moves this off season. We can make moves to stay strong. Who wants to come to Washington and try to win a cup or have a run with Ovi? Right? Of course, it's going to make take a lot more than just a few moves. But give me TJ Oshie at full health. Give me some extra salary cap space. Move out Pacioretty. Move out Kuznetsov. Move out Obi Kubel. And free up a little bit of money where you can. You can you could find a way to get some. And, and see what happens with Nicholas Backstrom on top of that too. Uh, we'll see on Branstrom. Interesting, eh? I can see that, Vassy. So the, I wouldn't say the Capitals are a couple pieces away from being cup contenders, but they'll definitely have some money to and some roster spots open to say, hey, who wants to come here and try to do something special? That's kind of my thought process behind what the uh, the, the Capitals might be able to convince people of in the offseason, potential free agents. So going back to Twitter here, any more things before we go back to Jason Zucker now? 
Anything else that happened that we want to make sure we get to? To fully need a rider for two seconds and a third is pretty slick work by the Winnipeg Jets. Very well said. Uh, to fully was at 50% retained. Okay, that's not 50% retained. Jason Zucker, here's an interest, interesting uh, deal there. We're going to go ahead and break that down. Yes, we will. Okay, so let's go scroll down to the Jay Fresh card on Jason Zucker. Then we'll look at Pat Maroon and a few other in the Chad Ruedel and all that. So Jason Zucker, acquired by the Nashville Predators, is a middle six offensive winger. He has definitely missed Malkin this season, and he was seeing a lot less ice in Arizona, but he still should have something to bring to Nashville's transition game. So this is another guy, Duclair, Dumba, Zucker. These are all players who were signed in this offseason to one-year deals on bad teams with the expectation that they're probably going to be moving out. So Zucker gets a big overpayment of $5.3 million, but he says, I know I'm going to be you know, just dogging it in, in, in Arizona, but I will get a deal at the deadline. That's exactly what he got. Over the last three years of weighted average data, we see move him off Malkin's line and give him the Arizona Coyotes. Of course, understandably, the value drops a lot. His wins above replacement percentile rank goes from something around 80 to something around like 45. The finishing's gone down a lot. The offense not down that much, and the defense pretty much the same as it's always been. Yeah, still waiting on Zucker details as well. Crazy trade for the Nina. Yeah, Pittsburgh got cooked on that one. Bemstrom and a pick that could be even uh, turned into a. Was it? Yeah, they only they only get a pick if Bentham scores certain goals amount of goals. Is that it? That, so they have to give a certain amount, a certain pick if Bentham scores like six goals. I think that's it. But yeah, Nylander is looking great for the Blue Jackets right now. So Zucker, ninety first percentile of even strength offense the last three years. But again, take it with a grain of salt. Look at that this season a little bit more. Look at how the finishing's dropped off as well. Really, his defense and his finishing are around twenty five thirty, and his offense is around eighty as opposed to ninety one. Well, the defense was already pretty low twenty four and finishing at thirty. Yeah. Okay. 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 Goals in that seventy fourth percentile. Primary assists in the forty second percentile. Preds rewarding the boys for making a push and missing uh, you too. I respect it. They've got a lot of picks, so why not? Interesting rationale as well. The Predators aren't necessarily contenders this year, especially with the amount of moves that other teams are making. Sixth, no matter what, third of Bemstrom scores six goals. Yeah, that's Dubas got cooked on that one, I have to admit. Uh, so where are the Predators right now? Am I looking at the entire league? The Predators are 12th in the NHL. Yeah, you know what? They're 36, 25, and 3. They're on a crazy tear the last like 10 games, aren't they? Uh, in the wild card, are they in the, yeah, they're in the first wild card spot. So you know what? I'm not saying they're not making the playoffs, obviously not, but I am saying, you know, they're making a little bit more, more noise than people thought they were. And they have a ton of draft picks to play around with. So, Hey, why not? Let's do something. Three seconds, three fourths. Let's give something to this group to say, Hey, we're not totally asleep. We're still trying to think about something. Is it a sixth for Zucker? That's it. Wow. I know he was injured a little bit and all that. And not having his crazy season, his craziest season, no retention and a sixth round pick. Yeah, that's a slam dunk. Whether you whether you expect to get swept in round one or you want to go on a deep run, whatever it is, a sixth round pick for a, play, a team going to the playoffs for Jason Zucker, anyone would pay that. Yeah, a big part of that is where there's no salary retention. So there you go. If it was salary retention, you're probably having to give up a fourth, a fifth, whatever else. But just a sixth for no retention. The Predators had the money to make it happen. Um, what do they have? Cap space? What? They have 33 million? So yeah, they don't need it. They don't need it. Exactly. They don't need it. What's going on in TSN over here? Can I just, hold on. Can I just take a moment? Hold on a second. I just got to go on my soapbox for a moment here. Can I just take a moment? I'm looking at the TSN panel right now. I know there's Sportsnet, there's TV, yeah, there's RDS. I, lock, I could watch a lot of places. I'm looking at the TSN panel. I see Craig Button. I see, who's this guy? Frankie Coronado. I see uh, a fine woman who, I, who I've never heard of. I'm sure she knows more about hockey than I do. I'm sure she's played more hockey than I ever will. But it's someone I don't know. And then poor James Duffy trying to find his way. Where are the days of Ray Ferraro? Where's Pierre Maguire? Where are these guys? I know the insiders have their own table. But this is the best we can get. Craig Button, Frankie Coronado, guys are just, like, I feel like they're just taking anybody. Jamie McLennan's there for comic relief. Uh, uh, O-Dog, uh, what's his name? Uh, O'Neill, just like a, a, a mouthpiece of Toronto propaganda. And whether or not you're a Leafs fan, I think you can agree with that. Where The mighty have fallen. Come on, TSN. What is this panel? I don't recognize anybody over here almost. And I feel like I know a good deal of people. Okay, speech over. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Let's get back to it. So the Predators, a ton of cap space. Hold on, they're going to the insiders. Gino Reddo's talking now. The way things have been handled from up top. And 
Cheryl Pounder, gotcha. So I'm sure Cheryl Pounder knows more about hockey than I do to the to like uh, an exponential amount. But the thing is, it's it's I don't I feel like she's not um, put into the limelight enough that she's given a spot on the panel at trade deadline day. You just bring her out of the woodwork, out of the woodshed when you want to just have one day a year. No, utilize her more if she's knowledgeable, which I'm sure she is. Okay, Biron was just talking about uh, Marks from now. Martin Biron. So Zucker. Okay, let's take a let's break down Jason Zucker now. Let's look at him a little bit closer as well. Zuck, good old Zuckerberg. Yo, it's moving to Salt Lake City. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, leave a like if you haven't already and subscribe for breaking news and analysis into the rest of the offseason, the draft, to free agency. This is just one of the bigger days of the year in the trade deadline. But of course, we also have NHL 24 franchise mode, career simulations, and much, much more here on the channel. We'd love to have you join in and be a part of it. So Jason Zucker, what's he done for the Coyotes this season? 25 points in 51 games. Definitely not the career, uh, career pace type of season. But keep in mind the lower ice time. Keep in mind the line mates. Uh, and again, keep in mind that uh, the Predators have so much cap space and so many picks. This is a, a fine, fine trade. Just throw a sixth on a guy. You have tons of cap space. No one's expecting it to happen. Yeah, we have a Fantilli career simulation. If you type in Fantilli NHL 24 career sim, data 782, it'll pop up. The Sharks continue to weigh trade options for Alex Bar Barabanov with multiple teams in play. Uh, minor deal, Turner Elson going to the, the wild for Nick Patan. Nick Patan once thought of as that top prospect for the Leafs, right? I remember people always going crazy about Nick Patan at one point. All right, let's break down the rest of the trades here. So to finish off Jason Zucker, definitely zero risk, mid-reward, but absolutely zero risk. And who knows, I come back to this five years later and that sixth round pick became a star, right? But zero risk on Jason Zucker for a sixth round pick. Uh, let's go. What are we missing? Okay, to picking up after Kuznetsov something to Foley. So, Malcolm Subban for future considerations. Let's just quickly look at this one. This shouldn't be a long breakdown here. Malcolm Subban, you know what? Malcolm Subban is one of when I think back to my franchise mode history, and of course, I started playing franchise mode, dynasty mode, via GM mode in like NHL 07. But I would think when I think back to my very first franchise mode memories, I think about playing with Malcolm Subban on my team in like NHL. 12 NHL 13 and having a crazy dynasty with my best friend on the Islanders. I remember that before Kucherov and Shifley and Malcolm Subban were all big names. They just had high potential. We built a dynasty together on the Islanders. Good times. Malcolm Subban, I love you for those memories. And I thank you for your time in my franchise mode world. He's been playing with Springfield down in the AHL this season, 11, 14 and four. Not the greatest record. Okay numbers, I suppose. Last year with the Rochester Americans, he was 20, 14, and 5. The year before that, he got four NHL appearances. The year before that, only the AHL. The year before that, 16 NHL appearances. So he hasn't played much NHL time the last few years. Since like 2020, he's since 2019, he's played, he's had 21 appearances. 21 appearances since 2019. Not great. So I think it was Vasilevsky or Subban in that draft. Sheesh. Exactly. So it's a minor league deal. I don't think it becomes anything too crazy. Malcolm Subban is a good AHL starter. I don't think he's just a depth goalie. I think he's an AHL starter that you can trust. But he's 30 years old now. I don't know if he has really much AHL upside. What are the Blue Jackets doing as uh, as in turn? Are they moving Merzlikens? Are they moving out a goalie and they need to have some more... Um, some more uh, depth at that position, perhaps. But it's not too big of a deal here. If we go and just look at the Blue Jackets quickly and how they shape up with their goaltending. I know they have Tarasov. They have uh, Jet Greaves. Of course, they have Merzlikens. So I'm not sure if he's going to necessarily be even the starter down in the AHL for Cleveland. Because, um, yeah, actually, I could look at it right here. If I look at who else is on that team, uh, who's on that team in the AHL? Fix Wolanski. Fix Wolanski. Let's go look at that team. <laughs> Trey Fix Wolanski. Gotcha. Cleveland Monsters. Ooh, I pulled that one out, eh? Let's see. Better keep Jet Greaves down in the minors and soak up the experience. That's it. If they need a if they're about to have some sort of trade happen, why call up Jet Greaves? Allow him to keep being the starter. Exactly. So Jet Greaves can continue to be your starter. He's put up good numbers. Allow Jet Greaves to continue to be your starter. And if you're making a trade, that allows Suban to come in and be your AHL backup. 
So there you go. Malcolm Subban now in the organization. Jet Greaves is going to be an RFA next year. Does this mean that the Blue Jackets are making a goalie trade? The, the Avalanche are going to be acquiring a goalie today, it sounds like. So I wouldn't be totally shocked if the Avalanche pull off something. Would it be for Merzlikens? I don't know. 5.4 million for the next three years after this? That would be pretty uh, pretty costly for the for the Avalanche. Yeah, fix Wolanski for a seventh round pick. He's a good value guy. Good old fix Wolanski. So that's the quick breakdown of Malcolm Subban. Not a ton to say about it. Next, we move on to the Pat Maroon trade. As always, we'll just quickly refresh Twitter, make sure we're not missing anything. Then we'll look at the Patty Maroon deal. The entire, the, all the top dogs in the league were making deals. When I look at the NHL standings right here, and I look at the top 10 teams. Edmonton, did they make trades in the last week? Yes. Toronto, yes. Carolina, yes. Colorado, yes. Winnipeg, yes. New York, yes. Dallas, yes. Vancouver. Uh, and Boston are the only two that didn't, correct? Because Florida, yes. So I forget, did Vancouver do something a little further back that I'm just totally blanking on now? I don't think so, eh? So Vancouver and Boston, now Boston made that one move. Uh, does that mean that they're totally saying, okay, we're ready to go now, this was our one thing, now this is that was the missing piece? I think the Bruins could still use some more. But they already are a good team. You don't need to force a move when it's not there. But at the same time, it's the playoffs. You want to have, make sure you have depth. Make sure you have guys that you can call upon when it gets to that to those 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 games in May. So if we scroll up to Patrick Maroon, a veteran depth two way winger with a lot of postseason experience as well. Um, oh yes, of course, the Elias Lindholm trade. That's what's wrong with me. That that I was thinking the last week that goes into the last like. That's we're into the last month or so now. We're getting to that month weight range, right? Sorry, I've totally blanked on that. So that was their big move they made before the deadline. They were thinking about that three-team deal where they get against. But yeah, so it's the Bruins really in the last month who hadn't done anything. Uh, still big, still physical, and can actually pass the puck decently well, but very slow, struggles to finish, and takes more penalties than he draws. There you have that sixth percentile in the differential. Dallas is sixth going to Nashville. Is that the, the one that Nash that the Coyotes had? Dallas, what are you, what are you saying there, Landon? Dallas sixth to Nashville. What's going on here? Um. Oh, okay. Okay. And the Zucker deal. Gotcha. So the Coyotes get the Dallas sixth from the Predators. Excuse me. Sorry, I wasn't uh, understanding what you were saying there. Dallas sixth in 2024. So now the Predators, even though they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine draft picks in the first four rounds, they have no picks in the fifth, sixth, or seventh. That's okay. Nine picks in four rounds, and then zero from then on out. That's all right um, as well. Sorry. Going back to Patty Maroon. So Patty Maroon uh, obviously has plenty of intangibles as well. You know what? These aren't the worst numbers for a depth 35-year-old guy who plays a physical game. Pat Maroon, Lucic 2.0, kind of in a certain way, that's it. And, you know, for a guy like him to not be in like 10th percentile or lower for even strength offense and defense, that has value. What are you saying? Hold on, the trade breakers are talking on TSM. Let's see. That's it. You, you normally get seven picks per year. So to have nine in the first four rounds, that's great. What are they saying so here? Seeing some deals, I think it's fair to say that might have, at first glance, maybe an underwhelming return. Yeah, so Jason Zucker goes to Nashville today uh, for a six round pick. Uh, it's actually Dallas. I don't know if you can hear uh, Pierre Lebrun very well. Let me know if you can't hear very well. I'd say that's a steal. And from Nashville's perspective, of course it is. But Arizona has zero salary retention on Jason Zucker's $5.3 yeah. million dollar salary. And in the market that we've seen here again this year, the last couple of weeks, Okay, thank you. This is Pierre Lebrun speaking right now. I'll let him do the talking for a second. Yeah, I love this move for Boston. We'll break it down some more in a moment. True, very few, very few. They take it full on. They only have to pay a six-round pick. All right, and, and Darren, uh, you know, you talked about the Tyler Toffoli deal with uh, New Jersey and Winnipeg. Are the Jets done? They're not done. Um, they're Jets are not done. No, they're definitely going to be looking for some help in the blue line. In a position where they can add something uh, substantive, as we've already seen Tyler Toffoli today, and not that long ago, of course, Sean Monaghan. But they do have some cap space in Winnipeg that they can utilize. Just over three million dollars remaining. To to be specific, to say, okay, well, now shoveled it out because he's short up. You know, everything he needs up front. He's looking for defense. I think now they're looking at the best available player that they can afford, and there's still lots of time. All right, now, now here's the Friday problem. 
Second straight year, the deadline's been on a Friday, which for a lot of people makes it a long weekend. But for people that work behind the scenes in the in mechanism of these deals, especially in the United States, it's a huge problem. Mm. If a player, if a Canadian True. or a European gets traded from Canada to the U.S., that player needs a work visa to play in the United States. So Chris Tan has got traded on a Friday from Calgary to Dallas. It was six Washington said down Hendricks left here, really. To oh. Dallas. Oh, so they can be recalled yeah. afterwards. Because gotcha. On a Friday, the earliest you can start processing is on Monday. It takes 48 to 72 hours to process the visa, and then the player can travel to his new team and meet them. So, so you have a future job in government. Is what is right time time. <laughs> but the problem is, so if you're making a deal now, if you're a team on the bubble or you're a team in a race, if you're tra- making a trade with a Canadian team right now today, at this late hour, it's likely a week mm. before you get that player in your mm, That's interesting. That's nothing, because I'm going to fly back to Florida tonight, and the airport's going to be much busier on a Friday night of March 8th. <laughs> 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 real so why in God's name is the deadline on a Friday, James? I love deadlines on the Friday. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> you get a weekend to sleep when it's all done, but uh, I understand the problems they have there. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, let's get to them right now. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Bringing it back here to data. Will Tristan Jerry get traded and Ryan Graves? Great question. Before we continue breaking down uh, Pat Maroon, I'll go ahead and answer that question for you, Brett. I don't think Jerry gets traded today. I think he just signed his extension this offseason. He has a some sort of no-trade clause involved as well, correct? Uh, he has a modified no trade clause, 12 team no trade list. He signed on for four more years as a full on starter, not a rental or anything like that. I don't think that that Jerry moves today. Ryan Graves as well is signed to a big extension until the end of 2029. 20, so that's another big contract right there with, and again, a modified no trade clause. 20, uh, 12 team no trade clause. Gotcha. So I think it'll be difficult to swing a deal with so many no trade clause implications and such long term. Uh, contract, uh, a, a dedication of, of cap space for such a long period. So I don't think either of those two get traded today. And I don't think it would really fit what the what the Penguins are trying to do. Yes, they just traded Jake Gensel, but I think they're still trying to hold to the idea of we want to be competitive next season. So I don't think I see Graves or Jerry moving at this deadline. I will say that. But anything can happen, right? Uh, Jackets need to shed more. He must be lacking for Macklin. I hear you. I hear you. As a Canadiens fan, I want the same thing. So let's continue to break down this deal here. For Patrick Maroon. This is the pickup that a that, that a Stanley Cup contender makes. This is going to be great for the Boston Bruins. Maroon, for a guy who fits the, the Bruins mold so well, he's never played for Boston. Vancouver, Anaheim, Tampa Bay, Minnesota. Now here he is in Boston. Physical guy, very slow, struggles to finish, takes a lot of penalties. But he's big, he's physical, and he passes the puck decently well. As we see in the 41st percentile of primary assists per 60, uh, sorry, just primary assists over the last three years of weighted average data. So his overall value isn't very high, as is normal normally seen there for a fourth liner. Only making $1 million, easily digestible type of thing. Bring in the veteran, works out or if it doesn't, you gave up a late pick to get him, why not? His finishing's gone up a little bit, his offense continues to drop as he ages, defense dropped a little bit as well. Costine and CMEC for us, and for CMEC in a seventh. Trade just going down here. Thank you, Landon, for breaking that in here. That's why you're the insider, Landon. So, a little minor trade going down here as well. Let's see it. Uh, what do we got here? What do we got? It's going to be the Sharks receiving Costine from the Blue Jack, from, from the Red Wings in exchange for Radim CMEC and New Jersey's seventh in 2024. So a little minor swap there that we'll continue to look at here in a moment when we are done breaking down the Patty Maroon deal. So yeah, new chair season, baby. Let's go. We're almost there. Tomorrow's the big day. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at uh, the first comments of the video. I had to scroll down on my phone here. My apologies. That was Owen who said that earlier. So Patrick Maroon, a Stanley Cup champion, a three-time Stanley Cup champion. He knows how to do it in the postseason. He is close to retirement. He wants one last run. He was going to get that with the Minnesota Wild this season. So why not go ahead and try to get it with the Bruins? A big guy who throws the body around, 172 hits last season. Uh, this year playing a little bit more ice time than he was the year prior at 12.46 per night. Um, did someone ask if Saros was going to move? Did someone say that? No, I don't think Saros is moving today, but I think Saros is moving eventually with Askarov. 
uh, taking over the crease sooner rather than later. Crazy to see the Predators have gone from Rene to Saros to Askarov. Like, no, almost nothing in between. A little Thomas Vokun in between. But, like, really crazy to see that. So, Patrick Maroon, good pickup for the Bruins. They still have, what, they have $57,500 left in cap space. So, they're done, I would think, now. They have no first, second, or third in 2024. And no second or fourth in 2025. This was, uh, the what was the detail on Maroon here? It was, was it a sixth for Patrick Maroon? I just want to double check. Um, thank you, Mr. T. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. I'll let uh, Lieutenant Tesora know. Uh, Jack Edwards seeing Maroon in the room. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He said that. He, he had insulted. He had body shamed uh, Patrick Maroon. Jack Edwards, pff, I, I'm really not one to speak down about people that I definitely don't know anything about, but I cannot stand jack edwards i know i just like ripped craig button earlier as well but yeah i <laughs> jack edwards gonna be picking up maroon from the airport oh my goodness <laughs> uh paul thinking paul donovan paulie d saros i think will go to the devils or avalanche when he does go that's a good point it doesn't have to be today but when he does go saros to the avalanche or saros to the um to the devils would be a huge boost for either side and really solve the long-term problem that they've been having. Georgiev has been good in Colorado, but will he stay there long-term? I don't know if he's the long-term guy. For the Devils as well, that would be a big... I, I, I can see the Devils the most in terms of need. But again, it comes down to value, and it's going to cost a lot to get Askarov. Um, what do you think the Bolts need to do for their future this season and next season stay in the mix? Jake, they got to do a little bit more. I, I'm, a, I'm a little scared. I know it's fun to say, okay, Nick Perbix and... Uh, and uh, what's that other guy's name? Those guys, like they're they're eating big minutes and they're doing well. That's nice. When the going gets tough in the postseason, you need to get, have guys who are going to be able to be doing the nitty gritty. It's nice that they got Anthony Duclair to add some speed to the lineup. That's really good. But I would like to add them. I'd like to see a little bit of defensive depth added by the Lightning, if possible. Sorry, I'm still looking for the, the, the Maroon return here. Um, I keep uh, looking at the comments and getting caught up in what everybody's saying out here. <laughs> and and so Maroon and Marshall on the same team here as well now. Hey, here comes some good memes in here. <laughs> a conditional sixth, gotcha. And he's still out for two to three weeks. So conditional sixth coming back the other way to the uh, Minnesota Wild. <clears throat> they have now uh, 3.458 million to play with. So they can definitely still, they they move uh, Duheim, they move Maroon. They could still move uh, Dewar, but they get a conditional sixth. I'm not sure when it's going to be, but they add a little depth pick in there why not will the blackhawks do anything i don't think so today maybe tyler johnson gets moved i don't think the blackhawks really do anything though today maybe they could be brokering a deal or something but no so the wild they want to be competitive as well asap they want to, they don't want to waste philip gustafson or um or or boldy or kaprizov or the last little bit of life that zuccarello has in him the good deal they have joel erickson eck on they want to maximize what they can do while still having to deal with the 14.743 million that goes to the dead cap of parise and Suter. ridiculous stuff so i'm not saying they're gonna be competitive next year but they want to try to not be at the, in the basement next year as much so if Dewar, Duheim, and Maroon all move out to get some depth picks, they can try to use whatever money's left over a little bit in free agency. I don't know. The Wild are in a very tough spot. They are very strapped for cash. So that's Minnesota. Um, I think that's about it for the Maroon deal. I like it for the Bruins. It's a great fit, and we'll see if that could uh, bring if he brings a little bit of his three uh, Stanley Cup rings and uh, the magic that they have to the uh, Bruins squad. Let's keep on scrolling. So Kyle Pozo, the next one to go. The, the Sabres do right by their captain and they move Kyle Pozo. He wanted to go to, um, I don't know if he wanted to leave necessarily, but I'm sure he wanted to be on a contender in one of his final seasons here. So he's a veteran defensive bottom six winger. He was so good in his, at his best with the Islanders. He gets moved to the, the Panthers just like um, Vladimir Tarasenko. So I'm sure he had some sort of full no move clause. I'm sure he had uh, control over that being the captain of the team. Always a sad day when you move your captain. Uh, Buffalo and Florida. But the Sabres are not doing it this year, that's for sure. And they go ahead and move him out. Uh, Florida. There you go. Data, did you have to bring up the buyouts? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. So the Panthers make another depth move. They get Tarasenko. They get uh, Okpozo. They're the top team in the NHL right now. They definitely want 
this year to be the year. They still have 1.39 million in cap space. So they could still even find something else to happen. They have no first, no second, no conditional fourth. Uh, what was the deal again on? I, I could have gone here the whole time for the maroon return. I didn't have to search it on Twitter. The return on, uh, come on, it's a uh, conditional seventh and Calais Sialin. Sialin? Sialin? We'll look him up in a moment as well. But a conditional seventh in 2024. I'm not sure what the condition on that is. We'll have to look that up, but nothing too crazy. Uh, the Panthers get to have Ocpozo in the lineup at 2.5 million. Um, did he have a full? He had no no trade? No, he didn't get any no trade clause then, if that's the case. No, I guess not, eh? Gotcha. So he just, I, the, the Sabres organization just wanted to do right by him in what could be his last season. So there you go. The Sabres give up, what, a conditional seventh for it to happen? No problem. They, they have 36 million in current cap space today. 36.7. Of course, projected cap space more like 8 million, but with all the injuries and everything going on, throw in a conditional seventh in 2024. Why not? The bigger, well, the big piece, just bigger than a seventh round pick, is the prospect coming back. I don't know anything about him. I will be honest. Uh, at least he's young-ish, right? Ish, 24. Okay, Callie Salen, fifth round pick by the Rangers, playing with the Charlotte Checkers, three assists in 22 games. Just came over from Sweden the last couple of years. Eh, yeah, former fifth round pick prospect. About the kind of value you would expect when you're when you're making a deal like this. So a conditional seventh and a 24-year-old defenseman who's going to be 25 at the start of next season. Eh, why not? Good deal for the Panthers to get another depth guy in there. Now they got O'Neill and Simmons talking together. Now it's just the full-on Leafs propaganda, eh, on TSN? Wayne's, I remember like three, two or three years ago when Wayne Simmons got traded at the deadline, they were putting montages together as if McDavid had been traded to the Maple Leafs. Here comes the boom. It's, Mc, it's Wayne Simmons throwing hits and punches from with the Kings in 2009. Wayne Simmons comes to the Leafs. He didn't go to the Canadians. Yeah, let's go. It was, no, it was in uh, on Free Agent Frenzy. That's what it was. And now two years later, he's on Roby Dot Island, bought out and not playing. So... I, I said it then, I'll say it now. Love Wayne Simmons in his prime, but when he was picked up by the Leafs, he was washed up, and we saw that very much, very quickly. Again, I'm on a I'm on a soapbox here. So Kyle Pozo acquired by the Florida Panthers, a veteran defensive bottom six winger, 42nd percentile of even strength offense. His fourth line minutes definitely uh, bring him down a little bit. Even strength defense in the 83rd percentile, though, you got to give it to him. His defense has been solid. Went back up, went back down a little bit, but he's always been hovering around that 75th percentile. He has always been quite valuable for the defensive side of things, as a veteran defensive bottom six forward should be. His finishing took a huge drop, then bounced back, and his offense has been pretty consistent around league average in that 50th percentile or so. His overall value took a big dip, then gradually came back. So Kyle Pozo, a monster back with the Islanders, right? Since he came to the Sabres, He's done good things as well, but gradually decreasing his role over time. As we see here in the ice time as well. We'll see this in a moment. Yeah, he's down. He actually played some okay minutes, 15 minutes a night sometimes. But his average at 13.37 this year, 16, 14, 13, continues to get lower and lower for uh, as he's getting into his... Uh, Ron Pulsar next stint is with the Jackets. Paul Saros, is that who you're talking about? <laughs> Not Yusei Saros. Uh, so yeah, good pickup for the for the for the um, Florida Panthers. Where does he fit in their lineup? Perfect guy for their fourth line or something who's gonna continue to be doing what he's been doing with Buffalo. You have Tarasenko joining the middle six, uh, and you can have Ocpozo in that bottom six. That's a, again a move that a contender makes, and it continues to put pressure on the other teams around them to do something. So you got Tarasenko on the top line with Barkov and Reinhardt. Love that. For Hagee, Bennett, Kachuk, love that. Lustreinen, Lundell, Rodriguez. I don't think that changes. Cousins, Stenland, and Ocpozo. That's a very good, that's an underrated fourth line. Oh, Paul, sorry. You're saying, I thought you were saying Paul. I'm saying, who's Paul Saros? <laughs> Saros to the Devils or FK with the Jackets. Oh, imagine Saros to the Blue Jackets. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Polly D. Polly D. Uh, okay, so there's the quick... Not much to say about that. Uh, the, the Sabres are going to lose him as a UFA anyways. They do right by their captain. They give him a chance to go for a Stanley Cup. They get a conditional seventh and a random defenseman. I say random. I don't mean to be offensive, but just a, a depth defenseman in the AHL who might find his way into a seventh D conversation someday. There you go. Kyle Poser to the Florida Panthers. I like it. Uh, ben Myers for a fifth. I didn't uh, look at this one really at all. The Ducks getting Ben Myers here. Ben Myers. Let's see it. 
Jamal Myers, legend. Ben Myers, uh, 25-year-old centerman playing with the Colorado Eagles, 25 points in 32 games. I guess there's no room for him. So the San Diego Gulls are loading up. They get Ben Myers. They get uh, Jan Mishak from the Montreal Canadiens. They're loading up. Where do I see Dumba ending up? It's gonna be more, I could see Winnipeg really making a push on Dumba. Um, in a perfect world, I think a team like the Lightning even pushes for him, but I don't know how how possible that how, how much of a possibility that would be. Same thing, I could see the Bruins, I could see the Stars, I could see a, a few teams being in on Dumba, but where is he going? Tough question. Do I see Allmark getting traded today? It's almost as if everyone's waiting on Markstrom, and then we go from there. But I don't know. Do I see Allmark getting traded today? I would I would be surprised. I think the Bruins want to say, let's run it one more time with that tandem, and then we make a Swayman decision next year in the offseason, and we got to move Allmark in July. I would think that he sticks. Parker Kelly's having a hearing today for a legal tech to the head on Andreas England. Is he? I didn't see that. Uh, I just want to look at the Ducks. No, the Ducks gave a fifth. Now the Avalanche get a fifth. Why not? They get to recoup a little bit of, where am I going? Central Colorado. Come on, I'm, I'm lost over here. So they get to recoup a little bit of value here. Colorado Avalanche do as they get a fifth round pick in their system from the Ducks. Why not? They had no fifth of their own. They have a fifth from Anaheim and Seattle, an early fifth as well. If I'm Anaheim, I'm kind of surprised why the Ducks would do this. I'm sure there's a reason that I'm not seeing. Why would the Ducks give up a fifth round pick for a random 25-year-old center who's going to be in their AHL system? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the exact uh, reasoning on that would be. Maybe if I look it up, I could see something. Maybe if I type in Ben Myers, something will come up that I'm not understanding. Nephew of the GM or something. I don't know. Ben Myers. Uh, any word on Saros? No, no word on Saros. I saw yesterday it was reported there was a potential Allmark for Pierre-Luc Dubois swap. Really? I doubt that would happen. But yeah, I could, uh, that's that's something. Any conversation on this? He reports to Anaheim. He's reporting to Anaheim. So they're they're needing him for the NHL squad. I guess they just need someone in their NHL squad. Uh, ben Myers played for their head coach for years. He loves Myers. Well, there you go, Narf. There you go. Thank you for saying so. So the head coach loves him. They get him in their NHL squad for a fifth. Why not? Okay. Former coach Greg Cronin. There you go. That explains it. Thank you, Nerf. Will be a good fit for Myers, and he's a good bottom six forward. Okay, so if that's the case, if he's going to be a bottom six forward for you for a few years, then okay, fifth round pick, I understand. I thought this was just going to be like a little San Diego move. Why would you give a fifth just to give a guy in San Diego, right? Um, did you know all the guys on the TSN panel right now? Wayne Simmons, Jeff O'Neill, Mike Johnson, Bruce Woodrow, all played for the Leafs. Yeah, we're definitely seeing some of that, uh, some of that Leafs bias out there. A non-roster invite for Joey Votto to the Blue Jays. Ooh, okay. CBJ fan. A AHL is worse than the NHL in terms of there's a bunch of opportunity starved players who want to impress parent clubs are making gritty and sometimes dirty plays. Got to keep your head up in the A. That's true. That is very true. Um, okay, I think we're back. Told that Pacioretty to the Rangers is a real possibility. Larry Brooks. Brooksy. I guess that's what I'm saying, Brooksy. I follow like no reporters, but Larry Brooks. I don't know. I, do I? What? At one point I did. I think I unfollowed him. I think he said something that made me unfollow him like a year ago. Maybe that's why. But at one point, Larry Brooks, of course, from the from the John Tortorella um, soundbite. I guess that's what I'm saying, Brooksy. So there you go. Larry Brooks saying that we could be seeing uh, Max Pacioretty to the Rangers. I guess, oh, they missed out on Gensel. I guess they're not getting Frank Vitrano. I don't know. The Rangers, they got to think that they want to do something, right? So there's the Ben Myers deal. Let's move on to the next one. As we continue, we're at 1.18 p.m. Eastern. We're still a little while out, not too far out, from the NHL trade deadline at 3 p.m. Eastern. Make sure that you're subscribed for all breaking news and analysis in the NHL, in the offseason, at the draft, in free agency, as well as NHL 24 franchise mode, career simulations, and much, much more. We'd love to have you join the team and be a part of the channel. So Chad Ruedel... Uh, this is too far. Jay Fresh, not happy about that one. Let's check it out. Going to the Rangers. What was it for? A fourth? Yeah, a 2027 fourth. Whoa! I think that's the first pick in 2027 to be traded. Unless I'm missing something, that is the first 2027 fourth or 2027 draft pick that I've seen traded. I have not seen the conditions on room. Did anyone want to pull that up for Michael Ack in the chat? Does anyone know the conditions on that sixth going to the... Uh, on the to the to the Minnesota Wild from the Bruins. 
Didn't see any conditions on that. But Chad Ruedel going to the Rangers. There's a depth defenseman for New York to pick up. That's why I mentioned Dumba to New York, but probably this is just your poor man Dumba kind of pickup. Chad Ruedel going to the Rangers here is a veteran de a defensive right-handed defenseman who every year puts up excellent underlying numbers in third pair or depth minutes. He's also a guy named Chad from San Diego. What a Chad. What a guy. This guy is the definition of does his job. If he struggles in New York with the Rangers, I'll be very bummed. So another divisional pickup right there. And as we see, yeah, we're getting deep into the century. It's uh, time's passing too quickly. By 2027, I'll be married, my own house. Maybe I'll have a kid by then. Who knows? Who knows what the future of Data 782 could be? But I'm glad that we're enjoying it all together here with all of you. So Chad Ruedel, last few years, look at the value. This is not just big dip and a random outlier. He was in the 90-something percentile two years ago, somewhere in the 60s and somewhere close to the, and somewhere in the 70s this year, giving, giving him a three-year weighted average data, according to weighted average data, a 75th percentile of projected wins above replacement over the last three seasons, 48th percentile of even strength offense, and 84th for even strength defense, very strong in the penalty kill at 86th percentile. This is a very good pickup for the Rangers, a good underrated pickup. And although you might think, well, he's a depth guy. Why is it a fourth and not a fifth or a sixth? I think a fourth is what's got to give up for a guy like this, who, like Jay Fresh says, definition of does his job. So not going to put up the goals, not going to put up the points, nothing like that. But the defense is consistently above the 75th percentile of the league. That's very good. 84th on average the last three years. The offense has continued to go down, but his value is high. Chad Ruedel does do a lot of things well, and this is a good pickup for the New York Rangers. Let's check their lineup in a moment. First, let's just look at Chad Ruedel himself. Yeah, bottom pair depth option for a team that wants to go on a Stanley Cup run. Like if you asked me two months ago, a bit far ago, you know, it's a bit far, but if you asked me about two years, two months ago, and you said, who are the teams that are really making a push to do something this year? I would have said, ah, it's pretty wide open. I don't see anyone really taking the lead here. If you ask me today, wow, there's a good five, six, seven teams that are saying we're pushing for the cup this season. They've really made their, put the league on notice. So Chad Ruedel, his minutes have gone down, but his, his, his level of play continues to stay up. 75 blocks, excuse me, 75 hits in 47 games with the reduced ice time. Last year, in the same amount of games, he had 15 more blocks with two more minutes per night. So it goes to show, give him the minutes, 15-20 the season before that in 78 games, blocked a hundred through 149 hits. Excuse me, keep saying blocked shots. Um, Sean Avery, I'll keep you updated as much as I can, buddy. And they're doing a mock, they're doing a mock draft lottery on TSN. What a you know, I'm Sportsnet East. I'm telling my my TV to give me Sportsnet East. Thank you, Helix on Vidotron. I hate Helix so much, but thank you, Helix. Now, this is TSN, you've gone too far. You've gone too far. Uh, do I think that Billy Huso could move today? I don't think so. He's injured. He's teams are kind of like he'd probably be a question mark for a lot of teams. I don't think Billy Huso is going to move today, uh, Landon. Giga Chad Ruedel will be missed. Yes. So, where uh, all this being said, he hits. He blocks uh, blocks about a shot per game, but throws a couple hits per night at best. He does a lot of things well at even strength. He's strong on the penalty kill. Now the question is, let's see uh, the Rangers. Uh, Rangers, that leaves them with what? Caps with 2.1 million. Not bad. 2.1 million. Uh... Sorry, my my brother's a Penguins fan. Just texted me. SOS is Crosby getting traded. <laughs> no, that he is not. That's for sure. Sorry. Let's go to the line combinations now. Does he fit into the lineup in the top six defense right away? Or does he uh, go as depth? Hey, someone someone fake news to my brother. Someone got him on the fake news. <laughs> TSN Delulu with the Leafs. Every time they lose three in a row, it's what's wrong with the Leafs. And they talk about moving Lilligren. Well said. Uh, yes, I do. My brother Lore. My brother Lore, Brian. Okay, so Chad Ruedel. Does he fit in the lineup right away? Does Schneider or Gustafson come out? That'll be the question. Ruedel would ideally be on that right side. Uh, they still have their next three first rounders as well. They could still be cooking today with that cap space and with that um, with those draft picks. Their next three seconds they don't have. Two of their next three thirds they don't have. But their next three firsts they do. That's interesting. Usually it's kind of vice versa. It's the opposite. But they still have about two million to play with. That could still get you, get you someone very valuable at fifty percent or even seventy five percent retained. 
And uh, the Rangers could still be players today. Don't I don't think the Rangers are done. They got Ruido, but I could say they're still in on Pacioretty. They're still in on Vetrano. That could definitely still happen. More about me today than ever. <laughs> what else do you want to know? I'm, I'm feeling in a good mood here. Maybe we'll answer a few more. <laughs> Okay, so that's Ruido. Great pickup for the Rangers. Good third pair depth guy. Exactly what you need on a Stanley Cup run. Love it. Jason Zucker, we already broke down. Let's refresh now. What else went down? It was, did I finally catch up to the trades after about an hour? Have I finally caught up? I think there might be you know, the Costine trade. Do that? And the Nick Patan deal. Gotcha. So Nick Patan, let me just go ahead. I'll turn off the screen for a second. I'll just pull up the information on Nick Patan and uh, Turner Elson. Honestly, never heard of Turner Elson. Some of these guys, I feel like I know the league quite well. But some of these guys, sometimes you haven't heard. So let's listen to Sportsnet while we uh, while I pull that up. The job not coming out yet. Kudos to you, JB. We got to get back to David Amber. But you were essentially uh, kudos to him. Tippett, Parkey, et cetera, et cetera. Philly did great. That's conditional first. Uh, Tippett, we know, signed a long-term deal. Now looks like a perennial 25-30 goal scorer. David? Huge. Thank you so much, Sam. Great to have the gentleman in the boardroom. Nichuskin's back in the lineup tonight? That's huge for the Avalanche. Oh, I'll, good point, Len. I'll go back to Duheim. I'll go backwards. All right. TSN? Let's go back to TSN here. And they're still doing the draft lottery. These guys. All right, uh, let's uh, go to one. We go back to the cell. Brady's going one, right? right? Do we have a month yet? That's just the evidence of how it went. You know, we don't have an accounting firm oh, here to dust it. It's a friggin' trade deadline, so we don't trust us. Okay, but. We Guys, you guys lost me. This is so bad. Okay, so to this deal here, again, just recapping it, the. New York Rangers acquire Nick Patan from the Wild in exchange for Turner Elson. Uh, just quickly looking at it, is Patan is that not a slam dunk for Patan having more value? Turner Elson, 31-year-old, undrafted forward, three games of NHL experience in his NHL in his entire career. In the AHL, career AHLer, 12 points in 38 games this season. Meanwhile, Nick Patan, former second-round pick, has 170 games of NHL experience and is almost point per game in the AHL. So, Minnesota, what are you doing here? What's the detail on this one? Nick, neither have like huge upside, but Patan is what, three years younger? Patan is three years younger, has 167 more games of NHL experience, and is point per game in the AHL, the last point per game plus, the last three, four, five, six times that he's spent a full season in the AHL, or at least an extended time in the AHL. No, it's, it doesn't make sense. There's something that I'm not understanding here. Because Turner Elson for Nick Patan, one for one. That's a slam dunk, dunk victory by the New York Rangers. I'm not sure why the Wild would want this. Maybe it's just Patan is wanting out and that's all he could get. But there has to be something more. It's definitely not just a one for one swap. There's something more that I'm not getting here. Patan and Turner. Let's see what uh, what Twitter can tell me if I look this up quickly. There must be something I'm missing here. Like I was with, the, uh, with that Avalanche trade before. Is that not a huge win? Like as 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 much as you can get a win as a, for an AHL player. Uh, I was able to one of these numbers. Not much on. Not much on actual ana analysis for that one. The Rangers giving Hartford an offensive boost, completing an AHL level trade to grab Iowa's leading scorer. Patan was an AHL all-star this year as well. Yeah, I'm not really getting this one. It's not like it's a it's not a huge trade, but uh, hold on. Max Patrick has been presented with an opportunity to waive his no moving clause for a contender. I'm told no decision yet. Brooksy says the Rangers were in the mix. Florida was also in play before they added Ocpozo. So Max Pacioretty, there's a trade in place for Max Pacioretty. Now, will one number one, will he waive the no trade clause? And number two, is it to the Rangers or is it to another team? That's the question right now. Uh, Matthew Nee's paper transaction down today, up tomorrow, no problem. No problem there. So Max Pacioretty, a deal in place to trade Max Pacioretty. Will he be traded? That is the question. So there's the quick breakdown on the Patan-Turner-Elson swap. Uh, um, I don't understand it. There must be something deeper that Patan wanted out or something because that, it, just in terms of pure value, 
no context, pure value is pretend by far as much as an AHL player can be. Now, one last trade to break down that happened most recently. Then we'll go back to the Duheim trade and stuff like that. Just happening today, Clint Costin getting traded to the San Jose Sharks for CMEC and a seventh. CMEC was acquired in the Carlson deal, correct? And Costin, was he acquired in the Yamamoto trade? Was that it? So let's pull this up quickly. The Dream Costin. Costine, leave a like if you haven't already. Thank you for joining us here for live coverage of Trade Deadline Day 2024. Here we are. It is the first round. He was a first round pick in 2017. He's played in the NHL this year. Four points in 33 games. Um, last year was where he had that little. He had a little jump with the Oilers last season. 11 goals in 57 games. But he had a little bit of a streak going for himself. That's where he got a little bit of value in the. Yeah, he was with Yamamoto for future considerations. Both of them were traded together for future considerations where the, the, the Oilers just had to dump them. Um, yeah, two franchise mode legends as well. Well said. Costine, what a legend. Um, sorry, give me a quick second here. Sorry, just had to qu answer a quick message. When you're streaming for four hours, sometimes you got to say something. He wasn't in the Carlson deal? I thought he was. Let's pull it up here. Wasn't he in the Carlson trade? No, who am I? Oh, you know what? I you know what's crazy? I'm I think in our franchise mode with the Sharks, CMEC was in a Carlson trade. I think I I just transferred franchise mode to reality. I'm so sorry for doing that. <laughs> he was signed by a free as a free agent in 2017. He has spent his entire 209 game career with the Sharks. This season, he's only played. He hasn't played at all in the NHL. He's played 40 games in the AHL. 16 points in 40 games. A little a little bit of an offensive flair. Not something that he was known for. Um. So that's uh, uh sorry. Uh, okay, I'm just uh, dealing with a message here on the side. Sorry. Okay. So CMEC goes to the Red Wings. Depth defenseman, the Red Wings ping up. Essentially, Costin wasn't doing anything for them. He's going to get a chance to flourish a little bit more in San Jose, but this is kind of like a last, last chance deal for him. Red Wings get a depth defenseman and uh, and like a seventh. So, you know, why not just toss it in there? A couple of players that you're just trying to see who could they get a little flash somewhere else. CMEC's 31 years old. He's going to be a depth guy. Nothing long-term for the Red Wings. Costin does have a bit of upside as a former first round pick who's 24. So I guess I do give this win to the Sharks, but you can't just say, I'm going to get a young player and I'm going to be able to fly. Zadina and um, uh, who else came to the Sharks? Like Ryan Merkley. You can't just put a young player on a bad team and say, here's ice time, here's success. It's not going to always happen. So Costin does have a better chance, I would say, now with the Red Wings, but this is pretty much like a last chance thing for the guy. He's now 24. He's got to do something in there. Uh, Francois Perron, maybe, maybe Joshua, that's possible. So Clint, uh, so many different names are flying around my head at all times. So Costine was playing, yeah, very limited minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes at times, averaging 8.43 per night. Give him the Sharks where he can go and play maybe 10, 11, 12 minutes. I don't know. They just traded out Duclair. They need someone to be playing in there. I think it's an okay deal. I, I give the Red Wings, I give the Sharks, excuse me, the edge in this one. Red Wings get a depth defenseman for a guy that they weren't using who was going to be on expiring contract. Throw in a seventh round pick. Why not? And the Sharks get to try somebody out. They've been trying. Look at what they're doing, right? They have Justin Bailey. They have Bordalo playing on the first line. They have a lot of players that they can just throw some ice time to. Say, so, yeah, same thing. Kalen Addison on the third line, on the third D pair. And yeah, I know Murphy was drafted by the Sharks. I'm just saying you can't just give a young player big minutes on a bad team and hope that it works out. I didn't say that he, I didn't mean that he got uh, acquired by the Sharks. But Kalen Addison, one of those guys as well. Third pair, oh, he's going to run the power play. Yeah, but I'm not going to break down Kalen Addison right now, but it's not like he's having a crazy year either. I like Costin as a person, says CBGA fan number one, but I don't think him going to the Sharks will really change the trajectory of his career. Yeah, well said. Oh, Big Joe coming in with the 1399. Happy deadline day. Let me pull this up right here. Happy deadline day data. 
Um, here's to the next two and a half hours. Here's to the chair. Keep up the excellent work here on the channel. Much love. A created player sounds intriguing. Joe, you're definitely putting your name in the mix for that created player. I will be adding you to the draw. From now on, donations are being put into a draw for created players in franchise mode. So thank you for that, Joe. Very kind of you to add. Very much appreciate it. And it goes to the channel, whether it be for the chair or for the next, for it'll be the show 24 coming out soon. It all goes back in the channel and I appreciate you being able to add to the community even more than you do, Joe. Thank you. Anthony DeMarco saying that uh, Wade Allison has been traded. Hold on, let's go back over here to Twitter. And Joshua, tomorrow's my birthday. Well, happy early birthday to you, Joshua. Uh, we're not seeing on Wade Allison yet. Hour and a half away from the deadline. Okay, and this is a little breakdown on Kyle Pozo. Offense has fallen into a ditch along with most of the Sabres roster, but he's a solid play driver this season despite that. So Wade Allison, yeah, Anthony DeMarco, usually a reliable source. Wade Allison, who the Flyers had gotten in the... Was he a part of the Braden Shen trade, the draft pick that he got back for the Braden Shen trade? Was that it? So we'll see when, he, when we pull him up in a moment. So, but just to finish off uh, what I'm saying about... Um, about Costin, I don't think this is going to change the trajectory of his career. Well said, CBJ fan number one. But if there was ever a chance for him to do something and get out of playing fourth line minutes, this is it. The Red Wings say, hey, we're cutting the court on Costin. Give us back a depth defenseman and a seventh round pick for our trouble. They got him for free, right? So why not? And the Sharks get to say, hey, we are putting just anybody out there from on a night to night basis. Why not, she, why not see if the former first round pick has a little magic left somewhere, right? Condition finally out on the Maroon deal. If he plays in the playoffs this year or else nothing transfers. Gotcha. He has to play in the playoffs. If he plays in the playoffs, the Bruins get a, the Wild get a pick. If not, the Wild get nothing. I see. So that, the quick little breakdown on that trade. Not going to look at the teams really. Not a big, uh, not a big tra-la-la for Costin and C-Mac getting swapped around. But that's my, those are my thoughts on that breakdown. We'll see what he can do, if anything, with the San Jose Sharks. Anything else coming in here? No. Okay. Whew, we're just about caught up now. Happy deadline day. Checking in on my lunch break. Welcome, Hobbsy. Thank you for joining us. Very much appreciated. Much love to you. Let's go ahead and do... Oh, hold on. Hold. Are you saying, oh, what's, what's, uh, what's Landon saying in here? Jake Allen to the New Jersey Devils. Breaking news. Jake Allen has been traded to the New Jersey Devils. Whoa. Look. So say something, TSN. Say something. Jake Allen, according to Elliot Friedman, Sportsnet West. You lost my you lost my views, TSN. I'm going to Sportsnet. Hearing traction on Jake Allen to the to the Devils. Whoa, this is big for Montreal Canadiens fans. Jake Allen, who is on a good con like on a lengthy extension. The Devils get their goalie, and they're gonna be picking up Jake Allen. And they're talking about Toffoli over here. Give me Jake Allen. Come on. Let's see. What are the Canadians bringing back here? This is big for the Canadians. What are they bringing back? The Devils had 10, over 10 million cap space. TSN won. I guess they're talking to Toffoli on the phone, so forget it. They have, no one wants to, they, They're talking about things that don't matter. If I'm watching you on TV on deadline day, I want breaking news as it happens. That's why the live streams, all the YouTube live streams are getting more uh, traction. So who moves down? Nico Dawes. Probably Schmid goes back to the AHL. Schmid goes back to the AHL. Dawes will play with Allen. And Vanacek is still injured for a little while, I suppose, which helps me in my dynasty league in because I get a I don't have to give up a higher draft pick if he doesn't play as many games. <laughs> I made a conditional trade for him earlier in the year. Again, Are they going to say something now? Mark can rejoice. Yeah, finally. Canes could definitely retain, but it's going to be more than just this season, right? What? We're going to check in on the Canadians next. A team that's expected to be quiet today. They just traded Jake Allen, James. Come on, James, wake up. TSN, they're, they're finished. Sportsnet West. Helix, give me Sportsnet. Come on, are they still talking to Foley on the phone here? Sportsnet East. Finally. 
I just think it goes back to getting some. But what are the Devils trying to do? This is more mixed signals. They fire Lindy Ruff a week before the deadline. They trade away Tyre to Foley. They bring in Jake Allen. I guess they're just trying to say, hey, we know we're not getting to Foley back next season. Let's get value on him now, which isn't even that much, but let's keep pushing for the playoffs. And he's a goalie next season. But Vanacek signed on as well. What does this mean for the long-term goaltending in New Jersey? They have Dawes, they have Schmid, who are going to be exp uh, expiring RFAs. They have Vanacek for one more season. What does it mean for the Devils' goaltending long-term? It just seems like some of the young guys, especially on the back end, have run out of steam. And Jake Allen to the to the to the Devils. So the Canadians will be rolling with Montembeau and Primo. It looks like for the rest of the year. Allen signed on for one more year at three point eight five million. Modified no trade clause. Seventeen no trade list. You'd have to w make sure that is uh, being followed. We're gonna keep refreshing this one. That's for sure. <laughs> Vanacek out today? I don't know. He's still injured. Yes, we mentioned that. Big news, big news is Joey Votto signing that. Uh, not signing, but being, getting invited by the Jays. But they talk about anything but the breaking news. They're talking to the random local reporters. I'm at the rink here in Winnipeg, and they're practicing. Uh, no one's been pulled off the ice. They're practicing pretty hard. Uh, we'll have a press conference in three hours. Uh, come on. TSN. Let's go back to TSN. Yeah. And it's a commercial. Ridiculous. But do they want... TV's dead. Is TV not dead? They're trying to keep cable networks alive, and this is what they do? Pending trade call, but he's confirming it. So it looks like it's pretty much locked in here. Pending trade call. Montreal sends Allen to New Jersey. Bam, bam, bam. Breaking news as it is official here. Pending the trade call. Sounds like New Jersey's closing on Jake Allen. Trade call hasn't happened, but it would be for a third round pick. Really? Just for a third round pick. I need to be in charge of anything NHL related. Yes. Is <laughs> Gary Bettman, local reporter Gary Bettman. Okay, so for a third round pick, what would that give the Canadians now? If they let's say just assume it's a this year, so that would give them a third third round pick. So you get seven picks a draft, two firsts, a second, three thirds. That's already two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen picks. Granted, three of those are in the seven round seventh round, but that would be thirteen draft picks in the first in the draft and 10 within the first six rounds, nine within the first five rounds for the Montreal Canadiens in 2024. On top of two firsts, two seconds, two thirds, two fourths in 2025, that's eight picks in the first four rounds of 2025. This is a great um, a great situation for the Canadiens to be in. Looks like They're back. Trade, okay, that's it. finally. Thank you for telling me now, James. You know, Montreal Canadiens have been carrying three goalies for quite a while now, and it's... Kind of conditional third. No, no tears. No tears. Have done just that. Yes, uh, it's pending the trade call, but Jake Allen uh, dealt to the based on games played. For a conditional uh, third round pick that can become a second round pick depending on games played for Jake Allen. Um, again, <laughs> Devils have been looking at their goaltending all year. We know that uh, they were in hard on Jacob Markstrom. Montreal and New Jersey have kept in touch all year on this possibility, but uh, I think at the end of the day, the Devils blind to get their young goalies. Or oh, it could become a second based on games played. Ooh. So that and that, that could be very likely with the uh, amount of injury that uh, Vanacek's yeah, having. Yeah, $3.85 million. So in the goalie market, that's not outrageous money. Um, so how long did you think, I mean, you know, the situation... They have the money to do it straight up, yeah. It seemed like it could continue the way it was, right? Because in terms of practice, you go all these games, it just... Oops. I know Detroit, Detroit's been doing it on and off. Yeah. So Jake Allen signed on for one more year, uh, 3.85 million, excuse me. This year, 6, 12, and 3, tough numbers, you got to admit. Yeah, Allen's got to turn it on a, a little bit here to make sure. Because if that could be another second-round pick, well, that's big for Montreal. Another second? Whew. The Canadians are like second round pick merchants the last five years. In the future from the Calgary Flames and the Jacob Marks from Saga, right? I wanna know how many games played does he have to get to here? Kind of like my fourth that becomes a third. It's funny, I traded a fourth that becomes a third if Vanacek plays a lot of games in my dynasty league, and now the Devils trade a third that can become a second if Allen plays a lot of teams for uh, games for them. 
Um, kind of a punt, to be honest. Expecting them to make a play for Saros in the offseason. That's true. It also takes them out of the market for next year for the uh, for the goaltending market here. That's interesting. So it's going to be in New Jersey. There, that's four goalies for now, and two, if not four goalies again for next season. Wade Allison for Dennis Gurionov. Is that actually the trade, uh, Logan? Uh, Logan Landon. <laughs> Gurionov, Logan. So Vanacek and uh, Allen are both signed on for next year. At, a, at over like that's almost seven million tied up for in just them, and then you have two young, good RFA goaltenders in Dawes and Schmid, who are both 23 years old. But you got to figure out some, what's happening on them. You would think at least one of them gets traded, or they don't run with Vanacek and Allen because that's a good one too. But you can't have Dawes and Schmid both in the AHL here. Um, Logan, <laughs> so it sounds official. Okay, so Dennis Garyanov, after being traded last year for Evgeny Dadnov, he'll be traded this year to the Flyers for Wade Allison. So Jim Neal's still awake. There you go. Habs are retaining 50%. Ooh, wow, significant because that contract is going to run through the end of next season. So the Canadians are going to be retaining there. Martin Biron, let's see what he has to say about that. But I do love it for the Montreal Canadiens. I love the French I accent. Been, been for two months. Yeah, yeah, I did, Golden. Thank you. Like, if you believe you're another three goals, but they didn't get rid of all his contract, the Habs are retaining 50%. Yeah, which is fine. It, it doesn't matter to me. It's just that if you believe in Primo that much, then make it Montembeau and Primo. Don't have Jake Allen hang around and keep playing some games and practicing. So now but it's over. He's gone now, Martin. He's gone. He's back. See, mate. Nah. Oh, come to it. So I love that for the Montreal Canadiens. Can it be a number one in New Jersey, Noodles? I think he just is going to be given every so, so half of 3.85 is what? What's the biggest surprise trade for you this deadline? So probably Milstaff for Byram is the biggest surprise so far. He's got pedigree. He's shown that he can be a one, but he can show. He's also he's a, he's one of the better one one Bs. Maybe not this season, but he's, track record wise, he's one of the better one Bs in the league. Uh, so he's going to be making 1.9 million about next season. So that's also the Canadians' last salary retention spot for this season. New Jersey gets a goaltender at 1.9 for this season and next for a third that could become a second based on games played. Um, yeah, and the Gensel move too. Not the, yeah, him moving at all kind of. That's I guess yeah. Flyers also trade Wade Allison to the Predators. Sorry, I said to the Flyers. I forgot that Gurionov's no longer on the um, on the Stars. Well, I, I was saying uh, I was saying Flyers and the Stars. It's Flyers and the Predators. My apologies. So yeah, Gurionov after last year being traded from the from the uh, stars to the Canadians and then signing with the Predators now gets traded from the Predators to the Flyers for Wade Allison. So I guess that's about it on the breakdown here. I'm a, I'm curious to see what are the Devils trying to do here. Allen's going to come in and play those games. This season hasn't been great. 6 12 and 3, 8 92 save percentage. Even last year, 15 24 and 3. I said he's one of the better 1Bs. I should probably take that back. When he was acquired, when he was in St. Louis, and when he got when he came to the Canadians, he was great. I think he was very good. 927 save percentage in the year when the Blues won the Stanley Cup, right? Am I thinking, am I thinking correctly? Or was that the year prior in 2019? But just to say, Allen, he's always been on that 1B kind of. Oh, and Jake Allen's on the phone right now. Uh, you know, Good ROI for the Canadians as well. It was just fair uh, ROI. Fair uh, ROI, I should say. That's it. Playing with three goalies was tough for, for Allen. It's true. handled it really well all season in Montreal, but how challenging is a three goal system like that now that you're out of it? Oh, it's super difficult. Uh, it's very difficult. There's definitely hmm. days when you, you question a lot of things, but at the same time, it's part of the business. Um, you know, those decisions are, are, are out of our control. We just have to go out and play, but um, yeah, you know, I think both the other guys, Sam and Kate, did, uh, did an awesome job this year uh, in the circumstance that we were in. They worked hard every day. They never complained. We'll be live until about 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, Mr. T. Uh, it was a part of thought we put a lot of, a lot of couple more hours. For the group, and, you know, they have a very bright future there. You said you were made aware that Jersey had interest in you, and yet most of the talk over the last couple of weeks has been about Jacob Marks from going to New Jersey. You must have been a very interested observer watching and listening to all of this. <laughs> I mean, if I was a GM, I'd be very interested in Marksman, too. But, uh, I can't blame anyone for that. I think he's been 
Bushnevich, it's getting pretty quiet on Bushnevich, I think, Golden. Hear the name, get an understanding of sort of potentially what's out there. Um, and an opportunity for me to, to get back in the net and play. The opportunity for my family to know that, uh, you know, where we're going to play next year as well. Uh, that, was, that was important for me, uh, three young girls, and uh, to go there and uh, hear a lot of good things about the organization. And, uh, a really good hockey team. Um, obviously, probably not up to their standards where they want to be this year, but uh, we still have some time left. And, no, it's not the next year. Yeah, you, you saw them firsthand recently. Thanks, uh, Mr. T. It's very nice of you to say. I'm happy to be providing it. Against the Devils. And it's pretty obvious to everybody who watches hockey. What they've needed all year is, well, you, solid goaltending. Do you think you guys can make a run down the stretch? Yeah, you know, uh, obviously, uh, when I get into the jersey year after the paperwork gets filed, you know, get comfortable, um, get into the, the group, but at the same time, there's not much time to, to waste around and do a You know, you, you get make those points count all the divisional games uh, against a lot of teams that are, you know, just ahead of you and teams that are just behind you, so it's great for that year as well. So uh, it's going to be a whirlwind here. I haven't, I really, you guys are almost the first people I've talked to, so uh, mm-hmm. I haven't really got my bearings yet on sort of what's going on, but, you know, it, it, you got to put the pedal down here. Yeah, we, we greatly appreciate it. You mentioned your three girls. We know that uh, this is just a, another trade for us, but it's an upending of the life for you and your entire family life. So uh, thanks for taking a couple minutes. Uh, go get things together, and we really wish you the best of luck with Jersey down the stretch and beyond. Okay, much appreciated. Cheers. All right, that is Jake Allen just traded. All right, there's Jake Allen traded to the New Jersey Devils in exchange for a third-round pick, which could become a second based on games played. The Canes retain 50%. Uh, they're in Brossard right, right now. Uh, Quebec. Uh, Kenzie, you cover this team on a night to night basis. You watch this, this is quickly. three headed goalie thing go throughout. Uh, your reaction to the deal? Okay, it's just reactions now. So now the Canadians, the chances of them trading David Saval just got a lot slimmer because they cannot retain salary. But it's 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 not impossible, but the chances have gotten slimmer. Eric Johnson going to the Philadelphia Flyers as well just happened as well. That's saying as well twice. Eric Johnson to the Flyers. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so the Canadians, the Ducks, and the and the Capitals have all used their final retention spots. Let me just finish the thoughts on Jake Allen here. At 1.9 whatever million for the next season, the Devils will be very happy to have a little bit more stability between the pipes. He hasn't been great, but the Canadians have been one of the worst teams in the league as well, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. The last three years, his save percentage, his goals against average have not been great. The Canadians weren't always horrible night in and night out. Allen made some miracles in there as well. It was great to have him on the Canadians. They traded a third and a seventh with, they traded, excuse me, a third and a seventh to get Allen and a seventh. And they traded Allen now for a third that could become a second. So at very, at, at worst, they pretty much break even. At best, they get a second round pick now four years later, you know? Savar piercing in Toronto, Chris saying first. Really, Mike saying I don't. I don't think Chris. I didn't see Chris Johnson say that unless Chris Johnson just put it uh, a second ago. I didn't see that, Mike. No, sorry, Mike. Can't get me. I'm here. I'm live on Twitter. You can't get me. The fake news. Uh, sorry. Back to where we were. Jake Allen. So Jake Allen in New Jersey will be you know providing stability, but at the same time, I'm very curious to see how they're going to work their top four. If the top four defense, uh, top four goaltenders, not top four defense, top four goaltenders, if you're going to have Vanacek as your number one and you're going to have Allen as your 1B, what happens to your two young goalies, Dawes and Schmid, two guys who are doing great things right now, or at least well enough, especially Nico Dawes. He's working like an animal down there. Nico Dawes is the dog. He's working hard in there. Yeah, we'll also get to Eric Johnson to Philadelphia in just a moment. We'll break that down after we finish up with the Allen trade. So Nico Dawes, former third round pick this season. He's nine and 10. Tough numbers a little bit, but on a tough Devils team as well, while he is also in his getting his first taste of like real starter numbers, as opposed to in 21-22. He got at, he did a lot in 21-22. But yeah, are the Devils saying Dawes and Schmid are okay, but we're like long-term, we're not looking at either of those guys. We're going to keep Vanacek and Allen for the next couple seasons and try to find someone else after that? I don't know. 
Appreciate it. B, Marvel 9. Everyone give Data a thumbs up. Great coverage. Thank you, B, Martel. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, B. Appreciate you. Thanks for the love in there. And thanks for being here. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already for breaking news, whether it be the trade deadline, free agency, at the draft, live coverage, and all that here on the channel. In addition to our NHL 24 franchise mode series, multiple, MLB The Show 23, MLB The Show 24 coming soon, and um, NHL 24 career simulations. So the Devils gonna are moving out that third that could become a second. Sorry, Mike. We are not going to be buying your fake news. I'm sorry. But thanks for joining the stream. Uh, so, yeah. So, a conditional second. Is that what it is? You, no. It's, it's this third that could become a second. So, is it a, if it becomes a second round pick, it would be a 2025 second, it looks like, as their second in 2024 is already gone. Their third could be from 2024, 26, or uh, 24, 25, or 26. We don't know. Uh, return on Johnson's a fourth round pick. All right, so we'll start breaking it down. Just to say the Canadians, at the very least, they get another third round pick in their system, whether it be adding their three in 2024 or their three in 2025. And if they get a second round pick, it adds to, gives them two in 2024 or gives them three in 2025. So a lot of picks for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, what are they going to do with those picks? We will see. But I like it for the Canadians. As a Habs fan, I enjoyed Jake Allen for, I guess, the majority of his time here. I think in a three goalie system, it was time to move on. But I don't mind getting that kind of value back for him. Maybe if the market was a bit better, it could have been a guaranteed second. But a third that could become a second is valuable as well. So Jake Allen, thank you for your time here in Montreal. Good luck in New Jersey. Hope you play a lot of games and it becomes a second round pick. But that just does it for that trade. The Canadians will run with Samuel Montembeau and Caden Primo to the end of the season. There you go. That trade is in the books. All right, next trade now. Let's get to the Eric Johnson deal. The... the um, the uh, Buffalo Sabres had a lot on that, on, on just in the defense in general. So I guess it was just that to move somebody out here. Depth, veteran depth defenseman, big fan of carrying the puck out of the defensive zone and then dumping it into the offensive zone. So, hey, somebody's got to do it, right? No retention on Johnson, just a full $3.3 million for the rest of this season. How much are the Flyers trying to be contenders out there? I don't know, but they got another defenseman in the system. Good veteran depth guy for limited value as well. That's good. Sabres fans were not fond of him from my understanding. Yeah, so big, steady decline. Steady 45-degree decline in his even strength defense the last couple seasons. His value as well has taken a hit. Even strength offense over the last three years of weighted average data is there. Defense in the 12th percentile, eh, giving him an overall projected wins above replacement of the 17th percentile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing against low levels of competition with low levels of teammates as well. So this is not promising on Eric Johnson, but to get a $3.3 million guy for the right side, which is also a rare enough commodity at no salary retention, eh, I don't hate this for the Flyers, uh, is for a fourth round pick in 2024. Was this a necessary move though for the Flyers though? To give a fourth, you know, a fourth is still a fourth. What do they need on the right side here in Philadelphia? A fourth is still a fourth. Uh, Sanheim, Zamula, and Jennings. So yeah, I, he fits. He fits for the right side. Even like Mark Stahl's playing a bit over his head as well. Like the, where are they in the standings here? The Flyers in the wild card are they're they're in the division spot right now in the Metropolitan. Who can really pass them in the Metropolitan either? I guess just the. Would it be if I look at? Sorry, I need to see the teams here. In the, who could pass them in the Metropolitan? Maybe the Islanders could pass them. There, yeah, the, the Islanders could pass them. Uh, maybe if the if the that's just four points back. The Islanders are four points back. The the uh, Capitals are seven points back, and the Devils are eight points back of the Metropolitan Division spots. So yeah, like Landon says, maybe a sixth. I don't know, maybe a fifth, but a fourth. Like a fourth got what? Like we if we compare it to some other trades, a fourth gets you what? Chad Ruedel. But that, I feel like they. Uh, they got good value there, the Penguins on Chad Ruedel. And uh, is Johnson playing as well as Chad Ruedel? He's not as big. Like, Ruedel is not as big of a name, I guess, as Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson, former top draft pick and everything. But I don't know. Fourth round pick? Okay. It's a good deal for the Avalanche. Excuse me, the Avalanche. For the, uh, for the Sabres, who get to move him out. And they just get to have some more breathing space on the blue line. But I don't know. Fleece is a big word, but I don't think that they got their money's worth here for a fourth round pick necessarily. If you're going to try to make some noise in the playoffs and you're going to get someone on defense, would you not have gone out and gotten like a Matt Dumba or something? So Akpoza no longer there in uh, in Buffalo. 
So yeah, you got, you know, you bring in Bowen Byram in there. So Byram, Darlene, Power, Yokiharu, Bryson Clifton, you got Ryan Johnson in there as well. So it makes sense that you move out Eric Johnson as he becomes uh, um, excess. You got Matias Samuelson in there as well. So it makes sense. Yeah, first overall pick back in 2006. Yes, we did the Jake Allen breakdown. Scroll back a little bit if you want to hear Dexter. That was an interesting one. So there you go. Uh, Eric Johnson to the Flyers. Uh, not a big fan of the value that he brings to Philadelphia, nor the cost that he took. A fourth round pick is not uh, going to break the bank, but I don't know. I'd be a bit more content if I, if I was a Flyers fan with a fifth. Um, Weeks on the Pat McAfee show, is he? That's great. <laughs> so that's that trade. The Flyers get a defenseman in Eric Johnson for the right side. Um, Simmons. <laughs> 2024 fourth. So how does that look at their draft pick situation now? The Sabres get to recoup a draft pick here. Ken Johnson underwent successful surgery. Great to hear. That's good news. Hopefully there's going to be good uh, results for him next season. So the Sabres free up a little bit more cap space. Not really uh, a big deal, but they get a fourth round pick in 2024. I believe it was not refreshed just yet. So, Hey, add another pick to the pile. And when it comes to the Philadelphia Flyers, do they have a lot of excess picks there? Were they playing from a position of power, or does that deplete their fourth-round picks now? I'm just curious to quickly see that before we move on. I don't mean to make a big deal of fourth-round picks, but they have two firsts, they have two seconds, a third, now no fourth, two fifths, two sixths. Meh. Um, okay, 2025 draft pick, 40 games played is the trigger for Allen. So 40 games played on the season, because of course there's not 40 games left in the year. So Allen needs to play 40 games on the year. How many more games are left? Or is it, oh, is it 40 games total over the next two seasons, though? Andrew Peak traded to the Boston Bruins. Hold on. There's some news coming in here. Andrew Peak, who loves throwing the body, loves blocking shots. Andrew Peak has been traded to the Boston Bruins. This is the type of deal that we are looking for if I'm a Boston Bruins fan. So is it 40 games in total? I would suppose it's 40 games in total. I think that would probably be the, the case. So if he can get another, I don't know, 10, 15 this season... 30 next year. I think that's definitely attainable. That is that that is a more likely than not second round pick for Jake Allen. Then if that's the case, then Andrew Peak going to there um, to the Boston Bruins. Good. If Allen plays 40 more games. Oh, sorry. Between this season, it was right in front of me between this season and next. Okay. So yes. And I do think that is very doable. I would say it's more likely that, that becomes a second than that. It stays a third. Andrew Peak being traded to Boston. It's a 2025 third that could become a 2025 second for the Canadians adding into their stockpile of picks in 2025. Andrew Peak to the Bruins. What kind of return will the Blue Jackets get on that? That will be very interesting to see. Peak, a good young defenseman, former second round pick. I like him very much. I think he fits very well with the Bruins as well. And that's the type of the deal that they had to make. So the Canadians just got a third second or a third third in 2025, two, four, six, now giving them seven picks in the first three rounds and nine picks in the first four rounds of the 2025 draft. If you're a Canadians fan, you love to see that. So there you go. So Eric Johnson, that's it on him. Let's start breaking down Andrew Peak now. Uh, yeah, Andrew Peak. Let's look at him. Peak Zaboral going back the other way. Really? Zaboral? What did you say? What's Kelly? What are you saying in there? Kelly? Vegas Twitter saying Keller? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm going to jump out of my chair. What? Uh... Come on, computer. Load. There you go. 60 minutes left till the deadline. Oh, you got fooled. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say that. I, if there's anyone not getting traded by the Coyotes, it's probably Clayton Keller. Okay, Woo, you got me for a second there. Because Kelly, I can, I can trust you, Kelly. I can trust you a little bit more. Um, sorry, so we're going back to the Boston trade here. So Zaboral coming back the other way. I wonder if it'll include any picks. Andrew Peak, solid defenseman. He's only 25. He's turning 26 in a couple of weeks. He's, you know, he's, he's, he is who he is right now. He's a big physical guy, six foot three, blocks a lot of shots, throws a lot of hits, but it's a crowded blue line in Columbus, plus dealing with some injuries this season. Andrew Peak, 30, 34th overall selection in 2016. Zaboral coming back the other way. We'll break him down in just a second. But Andrew Peak does a lot of things very well. Underrated guy. I like Peak a lot. I like Peak a very much. Fantasy beast as well. You need those blocks, you need those hits. So the panel now is now uh, O'Neill, Johnson, and Simmons, just the, the Leafs panel now on TSN. It's ridiculous. 
Andrew Peek. Look, Gary, for triple digits. Here you go. Look at these numbers. The last couple of years, over 150 blocks and hits the last two seasons, almost 200 hits last season. Almost, sorry, two years ago, almost 200 blocks last season. He does a lot very well. I love this pickup for the Bruins, and it's sad to see him go if I'm a Columbus Blue Jackets fan. I love Peek. He's getting a couple blocks and a couple hits per game. Does a lot very well. Underrated player. So Andrew Peek off the Boston Bruins in a deal that will involve uh, Zaboral coming back to the Blue Jackets. It's curious that they move out a defenseman for a defenseman, though, because it's a bit of a crowded blue line there in Columbus. Come on, computer. You can do it. I know that's tr it's really trucking along and trudging along today. Uh, and the Ducks claim late off waivers from the Leafs, so the Leafs just lost another defenseman there. Oof, that hurts. Trade breakers are live. Let's see what they have to say. So listen, uh, about a, a couple of hours ago, the Buffalo Sabres did come up also with Saul. It's a one-for-one for, one for, for Jacob Zaboro. Panthers, uh, the captain, the guy that wanted to give him a chance. And now Pierre Lebrun, another veteran, has been given a chance to go somewhere else. Yeah, Eric Johnson going to the Philadelphia Flyers, who keeps surprising the entire league. But, Bjorn uh, Fott's of Florida, really. Uh, Tobias Bjorn and, uh, Eric Johnson's a Another former first-round pick. Zaboro, also a former first-round pick. The famous uh, first-round picks of 2015 for the Bruins when they missed out on Barzell and all those other guys. Yeah, Zabora only 76 games in NHL. Yeah. I'm really surprised of this, though. That the Blue Jackets trade peak for Zaboro? That really surprises me. All right. Meantime, Darren, the Boston Bruins make a move. Yeah, acquiring defenseman Andrew Peak from That's a slam dunk victory for the Bruins. For as long as we've been building the trade bait board, not just this year, maybe even drifting into last year. Uh, unfortunately for Andrew Peak, his name has been on this list. So it's a fresh opportunity. It's a good start, new start for Andrew. Yeah, I think you got fleeced there, Columbus. CDJ fan, I, I think so. This might be the biggest fleece of the day. Like I know it's to a to a lesser degree. But this is like an AHL defenseman for a guy who could play like second pair minutes, blocking two shots, block and throwing two hits per night. Fresh opportunity for Andrew Peak in Boston. In the meantime, Chris, a, a move that might lead to a move by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, some interesting implications. This from Matthew Nyes is going to be sent to, to the Toronto Marlies in a paper transaction, and what that does. Yeah, paper transaction. Frees up a little bit more cap room. Uh, for the it looks like it's just the Zaboral. Peak was playing second pair with Provorov. Peak was playing second pair minutes. Zaboral's in the AHL. No, I do not understand that one at all. Playing less minutes this season, five, six minutes less than last year per night, but still, still blocking and hitting the same rate. Vegas Golden Knights. And so that would mean that Antti Ranta cleared waivers by the sounds of it, if no one claimed him. He went on yesterday, right? Yeah. Um, one note about the Andrew Peak deal for, for Jakob Saboral. And, and, and Cam Neely said publicly this year he was tired of talking about it. Bruin fans are tired of hearing about it. In the 2015 draft, the Boston Bruins had three straight picks, 13th, 14th, and 15th. They mm. took Saboral, Jake DeBrusque, and Zach Sinitian. Sinitian's now playing in Germany. Zaboral's been dealt. The only player they have left most three picks is wow. Jake DeBrusk. That's crazy. Under two free agent at the end of the year. The next three picks in that draft are Kyle Connor, or sorry, Matt Barzell, Kyle Connor, and Thomas Shimon. And, and That's I'm crazy. That's so, so crazy. So Every time I hear it, it's crazy. Andrew Peak, Starfleet legend. Yeah, so we'll be live with our San Francisco Starfleet NHL 24 expansion franchise mode tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. All right, thank you very much, guys. So William Loggison goes to the Anaheim. Lageson, Loggison, whatever. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That is the fleece of the day, I think. That is ridiculous. Andrew Peak going to the Boston Bruins, playing top four minutes, able to do so much. Physical defense only depth defenseman. Look at that. For a guy who's on a, a $2.8 million deal for two more years, he has term. He's still 25, turning 26 next week. 56th percentile of even strength defense, above average. No, that's crazy. I know it's the fourth percentile of projected wins above replacement, but he's not a guy, a depth defenseman who throws the body and blocks shots is not a guy who is responsible for wins. So this is a time where you don't got to look at this. You got to look at this. Even strength defense, 56th percentile. Zaboral at best is a sixth or seventh defenseman. While this guy has been playing top four min minutes the last two years, over 20 minutes per night the last two seasons, this year down to 15. It's ridiculous. I know the defense has dropped as well from the like 80th percentile to like 
40th percentile, but keep in mind how bad of a team he's on as well. Now that's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, carved out a role for himself in Columbus, despite being very little with the doing very little with the puck, but lost his spot in the lineup and was a frequent healthy scratch. Bruins think they can sort that out. Yes, absolutely. The Blue Jackets fumbled that one big time. Wow. If you win it all, if you win Celebrini, it all works out for sure. But still, long term, Peak signed on for two more years. And what's what's up with Zaboral? What can we see? All those guys cleared waivers. Kachuk, Boris Kachuk going to Ottawa claimed off waivers there. Um. Sens claim Kachuk, Panthers claim Bjorn Fott, Ducks, Ducks claim uh, Logason. No, there's not even any metrics to show really on uh, on Jacob Zaboral. What can you say about him? He's played 76 games since 2018-19. He has 16 points in his career, nine points in 31 games with Providence this season. I don't get it. I don't get it. He signed and he signed for what? 1.13 for the rest of. The, he's a UFA. He's an expiring UFA. An expiring UFA seventh defenseman. For a young defenseman signed on for two more years who's played 20 plus minutes per night for you the last two seasons, I am absolutely flabbergasted. I have no words. I'm speechless. I have no idea what the Blue Jackets are trying to do here. I understand he's been a healthy scratch. I understand you need to move him or something like that. How is the only value you get back for a right handed defenseman who's 25? turning 26, signed on for two more years with term, has shown the ability to play 20 plus minutes per night. How is the return only a seventh defenseman who's older and playing in the, and has a lesser role and an expiring UFA? Absolute fleece. I don't get it. I need to know more. I want there to be more that, that, that I can understand from this, but I don't understand whatsoever. Wow. Wow. Let's go back to the Twitter world here. We didn't get fleeced in the Bemstrom trade. At least they had a big win in the Nylander Bemstrom trade. I'll give them, I'll give the Blue Jackets that. Um, okay. Wow. So the Allen deal, we, we finished on that. The Johns, I think we've pretty much finished on the Johnson trade as well. I think we pretty much finished on that one. I'm not a big fan of it for the Flyers. Oh, we didn't do Dennis Guryanov. Yeah, we didn't break down Guryanov and Allison. Columbus had no leverage. Everyone knew they needed to move him, so you're checking play. That's true. But at the same time, it's it's a buyer's market for right-handed defensemen. If Eric Johnson can get you a fourth and Chad Ruedel can get you a fourth, can Andrew Peake not get you at least a fourth? I, under, I understand teams will say, we know that we, like, oh, I know that you want to move them. But still, I'd rather be scratching. Uh, he's not getting you a third. They'll bench him. Maybe, eh? Well, second or a third, but still. If, I'd rather be benching Eric Goodbranson uh, th and then then bench then being forced into trading Andrew Peak for a seventh defenseman. That, I understand the, the situation that they're in and they have to move somebody, but I don't get how they don't get more when you see Johnson and Ruedel Ru getting fourths and Peak, who's younger and does more than those guys, are is getting a seventh defenseman on an expiring contract who might not even come back to Columbus. It could essentially just be for future considerations for nothing for free. No, I don't get it. Good Branson has to play. Keep Goudreau happy. Bye bye, Eric Good Branson. Every time he gets traded, I love singing that song. Is he really? He's part of the reason Johnny signed? No kidding, eh? I didn't know that. Side note: Remember, Kessel must sign a contract today. Yeah, he'll he'll sign with the Canucks before the end of the day, before before three p.m. within the next hour. Might not have been Columbus's best offer, but probably needed them to retain. Maybe, eh? I hear you, Jack. I hear the situ. I can appreciate the situation that they were in, but I don't know how a young right-handed defenseman doesn't, even when you're up against the wall, doesn't get you a fifth or a sixth. They, you're telling me you'd rather take Zaboral as a seventh defenseman than a sixth-round pick? Now, Zaboral, I'm sorry to say, has almost no value. Almost no value. I'd rather take a fifth or a sixth. It can't be. And if I'm Columbus, I'd even consider retaining, but still, at $2.8 it's a good contract. Okay, so Logson goes to the Ducks. Depth defenseman has generally done well in his spot minutes. So he is out of the Leafs' depth now on defense. They bring in Labushkin. They bring in Edmondson. And Logson is out as they lose him on waivers. Boris Kachuk leaving the Blackhawks and going to the Ottawa Senators here. He's a fourth-line winger. There's his card if you're curious to see that one. Yeah, you should be very happy, Brian. You should be very, very happy with that. To get Peak and Maroon... 
for Zaboral, who essentially equals nothing in terms of trade value, he was probably going to walk in free agency this season anyways. He wasn't going to be coming back into the team either, most likely not. So a conditional fifth for Maroon, right? Or was that conditional sixth? Crazy, crazy. Peak and Maroon going to the Bruins for essentially almost no value back the other way, out of moving out of Boston. Kuznetsov's already at practice? What a guy. Okay, so Dennis Garanov, quick little swap here. As the Flyers acquired Dennis Garanov from the Nashville Predators, he had he is trying to find his way back into the league. Former first round pick, poor guy, trying to find his way in the world. And I like maybe it's just my bias for how much I like Andrew Peak, but I think the metrics are there to support what I'm saying. Speed and a decent shot. That's all he is, says Landon, a Stars fan who knows Garyanov well. Former 12th overall pick in 2015. Is this the same draft as, uh, yeah. So the guy, <laughs> Garyanov goes 12th, then Zaboro goes 13th, then DeBrusque 14, Seneshin 15, and then you have Barzal, Connor, Shabbat, even Erickson Eck later on, Brock Besser, Konechny. What a class here in 2015. Crazy. So Dallas uh, messed that one up as well, unfortunately. They traded him to the Canadians for, for Dadnov, which actually worked out. Uh, now this season in the AHL, 30 points in 27 games. He's looked good with Milwaukee, but only two points in 14 games with the Predators. So he's going to be called up now and um, I would think play some NHL minutes with the Philadelphia Flyers. Let me see right here. So small sample size this season, but over the last three years, we see fifth percentile projected wins above replacement. Doesn't do anything super well. Primary assist in the 55th percentile, at least there's that. He's very speedy. He plays against high levels of competition, so there is that. Um, but yeah, the offense has taken a big drop. The finishing steadily continues to decrease. Defense has evened out at like 20th percentile or so. Fourth line minutes, so you got to take that with a big grain of salt, absolutely. Wade Allison, acquired by Nashville, is a kind of speedy. Let's see, Wade Allison, he was a former second round pick. Wade Allison, woo, I can't spell here. Wade Allison, former second round pick. I forget, was it the Shen trade? Was I correct? No, it was the Kimo Timonen trade. That's what it was. The Flyers acquired Kimo Timonen. Um, sorry, they traded him to the Blackhawks and they acquired two seconds. Jeremy Bracco and Wade Allison in the Kimo team and trade to the uh, Blackhawks. So Wade Allison, 22 points in his career so far with the with the Flyers. Physical fourth line guy, six foot two, uh, 205, 17 points in 46 games in the AHL this season. No retention on peak. That's crazy, man. 50, I know that uh, that hurts the value that you can get back, but still. Who's still going? Matt Dumba, Nick Dowd, Max Pacioretty, big names on the trade bait board, they say. Uh, 15 points in 60 games this season with the Flyers in the NHL. Looking at his card right now, we see over the last three years, weighted average data, 11th percentile, smaller NHL sample size a little bit as well, fourth line minutes. But from what they've seen, looking good in the even strength offense, the goals, really hard to look at these cards with such small sample sizes, but here he is. Offense is up here, finishing in defense down here. This is an AHL trade, says Jay Fresh. Maybe neither of them get to play NHL minutes even, who knows? But We'll see there. So that's Guryana for Allison. A good little swap. Both sides want to say, hey, these guys are AHL guys for us. Let's give them starts somewhere else. Let's just see if we can make a little swap. Kind of like the Perrault and Mishak trade to a lesser degree. Pretty simple enough. One for one, Guryana for Allison. And so the Flyers get Eric Johnson and Dennis Guryana for Wade Allison and a fourth. Okay. 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 So I think that brings us back up to date. Ooh, 16 new things. What am I missing over here? Let's go back to the Twitter world. What else is going on in Twitter? Blue Jack is not retaining any salary on peak in the deal with the Bruins. Um, shut down bottom, bottom pairing veteran D is Eric Johnson, who won a cup with Colorado. Uh, some waiver claims there as well. We can look at the waiver claims in a second. Tobias Bjorn fought as well. Oh, Duheim. We'll look at Duheim. If we can finally have a moment to slow down, we'll look at Duheim. Um... Peak dollar store, Brandon Carlo. <laughs> God, I think that's about it. Yeah, no other details. Quick correction. Hit 40, game, 40 or more games exclusively in 2024. Oh, okay. So take that back. That third is probably going to stay a third. If Allen has to appear in 40 games or more for the Devils in 2024-25, that changes things. I, maybe not most likely a third, but it definitely adds to the then check the uh, possibility of it being just uh, a third and not a second. 
Uh, so Vanacek this year, let's see, he's appeared in 32 games. The Devils, have they had a goal who's appeared in 40 or more games as of late? Schmid 20, Dawes 20, Vanacek 32. The year prior, Vanacek 52, Blackwood 22, Schmid almost 20 there. So they've had like three goalies playing 20 games each the last couple seasons. So if you're going to have Vanacek again with Allen again, and then who knows if Schmid and or Dawes are in the mix next season as well, it's going to be tough for him to find 40, 40 games. Are the Knights done? I don't think they are, Joshua. I don't think they are. Canucks might have something up, put Colson down to the AHL. Yeah, that's definitely going to be Phil Kessel. That's definitely with Phil Kessel on his way. Uh, yeah, we're down to the last 42 minutes now until the trade deadline. We'll be live a little bit afterwards for the trades that trickle in. But the majority of our coverage is done. We're into the second half of things. We're uh, approaching the two-hour mark with about an hour and a half to go, I would say. Yeah, we're just over the halfway point. So, yeah, that's going to be tough for that third to become a second. It's possible, but it'll be tough. Sounds like the Red Wings have been searching for a veteran forward to add to their roster. Really, the Red Wings are looking for a veteran forward. After they get a veteran defenseman in CMEC, they're looking for a veteran forward now. Really? The Red Wings? Where are they again in the standings? Let me pull this up. They're first in the wild. You know what? Yeah, yeah, that's it. They're first in the wild card. But it's tough for these teams that know that we'll probably make the playoffs, but we're not doing even close as much as the top contenders. They're in tough positions. We're not going to be close to competing in the playoffs most likely, but it's also pretty likely that we're making the playoffs. Of course, all, each one of those guys on those teams in the playoffs believe in their team and think they can make some noise, but still. What time frame are you looking at for the Starfleet series? It will be tomorrow night, Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Joe. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Maybe Pacioretty to Detroit. They've also been talking about the Rangers. The Rangers got to get a forward here. They've been thinking about Vetrano. They've been thinking about Pacioretty. They got to think about something ASAP here. Pacioretty is going to be a forward that people want. Um, the, if, if the Rangers want somebody and the Red Wings want somebody and you got Dumba on the move somewhere as well, there's still a lot to happen in the next 45 minutes here. Uh, Barabanov could be something that happens as well. As Vasi says, total, total speculation. Maybe Barabanov to the Wings. Uh, what other teams need to do something here from looking at the entire NHL? I would think Vancouver still wants to do something. Vegas still wants to do something. Winnipeg still wants to do something on the blue line. Uh, the Kings were thinking about Toffoli. They missed out on him. Uh, yeah. And there's other teams that are still going to be looking to be uh, sellers. If I look at the... That's... Sorry, Mike. Mike, if you keep putting misinformation, I'm going to I'm gonna have to time you out a little bit. We love you. Thank you for being here in the chat. Thank you for your viewership and for spending time with us this afternoon. But if you're going to be giving us false information, you can't have it. But thank you for still trying to... Uh, thank you for still being here, Mike. Appreciate you. So put Colson down to the AHL means that it's likely um, Phil Kessel time. Edstrom and Rempe were just sent down for the... For the uh, uh, Red Wings as well. Is that what you're saying? What's uh, Edstrom up to these days? Edstrom. Uh, is it Adam Edstrom? Oh no! Sorry, I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking about uh, Elmer Soderblom. That's what I'm thinking of. Sorry, Adam Edstrom with the uh, Rangers. My apologies. Uh, Rangers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, so the Rangers make a little bit of space there. I would think the Rangers are definitely doing Vetrano or Pacioretty. That's my, my money. My money's on that. Vetrano or Pacioretty. Kubelik to the Red Wings, maybe? The, the Senators would definitely want to be moving him, I would think. Let's see. Uh, oh, it, oh, it also might just be so that they're eligible for the, for the, uh, for the AHL playoffs. Same thing for the the Predator, the the Capitals. They sent down Hendricks Lapierre and a few other guys. Let's quickly go back to the to the uh, Brandon Duheim trade. I didn't get to do a breakdown for that one. A lot of people are asking for it in the Discord server. A lot of wild fans. Let's do a quick breakdown of that before we continue. Unless other trades break. Of course, Jordan Eberle extending with the Kraken. Love Eberle. He does so much so well. Good veteran guy who's just a trooper. Solid winger on uh, on the Kraken. He just wants to enjoy his life in Seattle. He signs a two-year extension with a full no-movement clause. Uh, Duheim's going to be back yesterday. Of course, we had the Gensel breakdown yesterday, the Duclair breakdown yesterday. All those are here on the YouTube channel. Click on the Data782 uh, channel title. Click on videos or click on live, and you'll see all those breakdowns for all those trades and many more coming over the offseason, over the trade deadline. We could even break down, or sorry, over the draft, I should say. We could break down Yakov Trenin as well. 
So Brandon Duheim acquired by the Avalanche, bottom six two-way winger who kills penalties. He's a, he's a favorite. He's been a favorite in, in Minnesota. People have enjoyed having him. He has been – how could I – how could I put – maybe if, if I, when I show his, his path in the NHL, I can put it into words a little bit better. Brandon Duheim. So Duheim, fourth round pick in 2016. He spent his time in uh, in Providence. He spent his time in Iowa. Finally made the NHL in 2021 after, what, five years after being drafted. So he's been a trooper, fan favorite for the Minnesota Wild. Now he plays two, three full, parts of three full seasons pretty much. And they just want to move on from him as a UFA. They know that he's a good depth guy who can bring value to a playoff contender. And that's not what they are this season. So the Wild just essentially say, hey, we're sellers. Let's do it. As much as it hurts to trade a fan favorite, Duheim, he's been pretty valuable the last few years. Definitely taking a dip this year. But his offense, big jump in 22-23, is finishing his offense and his overall value. Um... Oh, they're looking at Tanner Jean over here. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, even strength offense, 57th percentile. Wild Twitter is in shambles. I understand. A fan favorite for sure. Did a lot of things well. Bottom six, two-way winger who kills penalties and has a good physical game on top of it. Duhame? Duhame. 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 I'm, th I'm, th I'm kind of putting the, the French into it. Uh, who do the Knights get with their extra cap space? They'll definitely be in on whoever the Rangers are also in on. Uh, the, 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 the Vetranos and the Pacioretty, maybe Pacioretty goes back, the Vetranos, the Pacioretty's of the world type of thing. So yeah, the Wild, what did they pick up for, uh, Duhame? Duhema? Wait, uh, Duhema? Is that what you said? Duhema? No, it's not Duhema. That my, my French Canadian roots won't let me do that. So it's a third round pick. So you know what? It's good value back. I gotta say, it's good value back for the uh, for the for the Minnesota Wild. If you're gonna move a bottom six forward and get a third round pick back, a guaranteed third, even if it's in a couple of years, I think you gotta say, all right, let's do it. He's drafted as a fourth round pick, and you got a third round pick for him as a depth guy. We'll take him. Uh, the deadline is in 36 minutes, Landon, but we'll be live for another hour and a half or so. So they get a third round pick in 2026 from the Avalanche. So start building picks in that regard. Why not? Meanwhile, the Avalanche, who were, they also traded out picks for the Trenton deal. They're able to say, hey, we're an all-in kind of team. And even for the next few years, they're moving into Tampa mode. Let's just say, forget all the picks for the next few years. We have our core signed on. We don't need to say that we need rentals every season. They have no second, no third in 2024, no first, second, or third in 2025, no third in 2026. So they move out a third in the Duheim trade. Um, no, is he just sitting around? I don't know. Mikey, long time no talk. Mikey BX. I'm going nuts over here. The Rangers need a top six winger. I think the Rangers are still very much in the mix, Mikey. Don't be scared yet. Uh, at least the, the Stars got Tanev, but still, yeah. So they say, the Avalanche are saying, hey, we have McKinnon, Rantanen, Nachuskin, Lekkinen, Colton, Miles, probably Middlestat, Makar, Gerard, Manson, Taze and Gorgiev all signed on for next season, if not further. We can say forget the picks for a little bit. We don't need to think about them too, too much. They're moving into tamp mode a little bit here. Uh, yeah, the Stars, I think the Stars would need a little bit more. But what else could the Stars do at this point? I don't know. We'll look at the trend and breakdown in a moment as well. But a third round pick for Duhaime, that's a good value back for the for the Wild. For a rental bottom six guy, it's good value. As much as it's, you're in shambles to move him as a Wild fan, it's good value. It's, it's even better than probably you would have thought. I don't think Montreal will make any more moves, but if they do, will we see more Laval Rocket upgrades to help for the playoffs? I don't know. A minor league swap could always happen, but if they were to move, if, it were, if they were to make another trade today, it'd probably be uh, David Savard. And if they were to trade Savard, it would probably be for like a second round pick or something at this point in the, in the day, Rock and Pop. Um, so the, the stars still have about 2 million to play with. They still have three firsts to play with as well. The stars are in uh, scary territory here. No second, no third, no fourth this year, no second, no fourth the year after. I don't know. Riley Smith back to base. I know Riley Smith has a no move. Uh, I'm not sure what type he has, but he has a, 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 some form of a no trade clause. All this noise only for Vegas to LTIR and Knights to repeat. <laughs> the Vegas LTR Knights. At least this time, it's a bit more understandable with the uh, stone having a lacerated spleen, right? Didn't it get surgically removed? People who are crying about it this year are crying for no reason. If you want to cry last year, okay. But this year, 
No. What would it cost for Claude Giroux to Boston? A lot. I think Giroux is happy in, in Ottawa. He has a full no, – does he have a full no-move no, no move clause? Ottawa, Ottawa, Ottawa. It would take a lot, Chuck. It would take a lot. Uh, yeah, he has a full no-move clause, and he signed on for one more year in a team that's close to where he lives as well, I believe. Smith has a 10-team no-trade clause. Yeah, it wouldn't be impossible, but I don't think the Penguins want to say we're full-on sellers. I think they still want to be competitive next year. And they just saw the, the Gensel move as an unfortunate thing that they had to uh, just take on. Uh, okay, there you go. So that's the center. So now the other deal that the Avalanche made around this time was the acquisition of Yakov Trenin and Graham Sward for Jeremy Hansel and a 2025 third. So they move out another third. I, yeah, I hear that, Andrew. Don't say that logical take on our hockey. They'll down, <laughs> down vote you to the ground. <laughs> I can't stand people who are crying over, not, 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 the, not the people. I just can't stand that take. I hate takes that aren't rooted in logic. Last year, you want to cry about Tampa and Vegas last couple of years? Sure, cry. Yes, no problem. If you're going to cry this year for the guy getting his spleen surgically removed, I don't know what to tell you. Like, uh, what, what is there to say? He went into his bathroom one night with a uh, with syringe and tried to inject himself with something that was going to make that spleen have to get... I don't know. What are you... Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Uh, it's too quiet. The quiet before... The, the calm before the storm. Okay, so Trennan. Trennan is one of those guys. Trennan is one of those guys. I remember, I think maybe like, I don't know, three, three years ago, I remember seeing his name in Nashville, and I was thinking... No, I think I, I saw his, his uh, rookie card from the Predators... In like 2020, 2021, I was saying, but who is this guy? I've never heard of this guy. And he turned out to be a solid piece for the Predators the last few seasons. A second round pick who has become a consistent 20 point guy in that bottom six for the Predators. He is six foot two, 201. He, uh, he's, he's been a, a welcome surprise for the Predators. Let me just quickly refresh this. And he's, okay, there we go. Uh, ben Myers needs 20 more games to retain his RFA status. Gotcha. He'll likely oh, have, oh the Ducks only have 20 games left. Ooh, he'll, so he'll likely be a UFA. He'll be a UFA six at the end of the year. Uh, Yane, welcome. Short visit to say hi to everyone, and now I'm out. Thank you for stopping by, Yane. Thank you for the big hello. We can break down this Troy Stetcher deal even. So he's a physical four-checking two-way winger who kills penalties. On top of his excellent defensive impact, he can also chip in offensively off extended possessions. So I love Yakov Trenin. I think he's going to be a fantastic piece for the Avalanche depth. Let's look at the Avalanche lines here. When you throw in Trenin and you throw in Zuhaim, Zuhaim, if you throw them into your bottom six and you have Casey Millsat in here as well, yeah. Last week, you had Ross Colton up here. You had Jean-Luc Foudy over here. Now throw Trent in here, Duheim here, Middlestat there. Oh, yeah. The Avalanche are definitely amongst the uh, top two, top three favorites for the Stanley Cup, if not being the absolute favorite with, like, Florida up there, right? Rock and Pop. Trennan was not – was this not the name of one of Starfleet's characters or actor? Oh, you're thinking about um, – the actor who played Pavel Chekhov? Are you thinking about Pavel Chekhov himself or the actor who played Pavel Chekhov in the movies most recently, the J.J. Abrams movies, who passed away? Yes, you might be thinking about that, Rock and Pop. Yeah, always love any Star Trek references. So the Avalanche look amazing. Trenton, what does he do well? Well, let's break it down here. 95th percentile of even strength defense the last three seasons. His defensive impact has grown very nicely. Great gradual increase. We've seen a lot of decreases, but on his card, we see a nice increase. Now, the offense has taken a good little jump as well, and the finishing has been okay. 100th percentile for the penalty kill. I'm not sure how much penalty kill he's playing, but there you go. He plays the, way, the game in a way the abs are very fond of, as we're going to see in this card right here. When it's just his 2023-24 stats, 95th percentile of even strength defense wins above replacement. Amazing. 99th percentile of the penalty kill. What does he do super well? Four check involvement, hits, in zone offense, in zone shot assists. What does he do pretty, pretty well? Chance assists, primary shot assists, high danger passes, in zone shots, zone entries. What does he goals? What does he not do well? Primary assists, rush offense, rush shot assists, rush shots, blah, blah, blah. So off the rush, he won't do as much. But as a defensive two-way guy, physical, four-check involvement, penalty killing, this is exactly not just the depth move, but a nice middle six move that a team like the Avalanche makes when they're pushing for a Stanley Cup. Love that move for the for the Avalanche. They have a third-round pick to do it, uh, as well as Jeremy Hansel. 
I don't know much about Jeremy Hansel, I will admit. Ooh, ooh, Hansel. They also got a goalie back, probably just has a contract spot, I would think. Jeremy Hansel, uh, sixth round pick in 2023. So you know what? That's not a terrible prospect here. This is an okay prospect going back to the Predators, which makes sense. It should be. Jeremy Hansel, 50 points in 58 games in the OHL as a 21-year-old. So definitely an, an, uh, an overaged player, right? Um, what do they call that? An overaged junior player? Is that what they call it? Yeah, 30 minutes ago now. Okay. Andrew Peak also gets a third round pick. Ooh, okay. My fury can subside now. My fury can subside. A 2027 third, but at least it's a third. Whoo! Okay, this makes a lot more sense now. When Ruedel and Johnson go for a fourth, Zaboral's just the toss in, and you got a third round pick for Peak. Over Ager, that's what it is. Okay. It still is unfortunate. I think that Peak has even more value than that. I'm very high on Andrew Peak. But to say at least you get a third back, okay. My fury can subside a little bit now for the Blue Jackets management. Third round pick and Zaboral coming back for Andrew Peak. <sighs> My goodness. <laughs> I saw that week's tweet. There it is. Uh, in addition to Peak was potentially trending toward a buyout this time. Buyout? What? I guess just because of the situation, not because of his value. But all right, at least they get something out of that then if things weren't going to work out with how his how he wasn't happy. So Jeremy Hansel, also one of the Predators here. It's a good pickup for a, a depth prospect who maybe becomes something. Now he's 21. He just turned 21. He's an overager. He can maybe be in the AHL squad next season. And worst case, you got a third round pick. So Trennan holds a lot of value. It's it's unfortunate that they, they move out Trennan and they bring in Zucker. So I don't know. If, what kind of message is that? I don't know. But um, Rock and Pop, is it me or the defenseman player market is low this year? There's not a lot of high reward back. Yeah, a lot of like seconds, thirds, not as much as like the Ben Sherratt first market, right? It's a couple of years ago, not as much. So Jeremy Hansel going back the other way to the Predators and the Avalanche also pick up Graham Sward. This is probably like a 23-year-old guy playing in the, in the, in the college. Oh, no, he's a, I thought he was a goalie. I, I saw G. But no, because Graham. Sorry, he's a defenseman. Uh, oh, you know what? What? This is great. So the Avalanche essentially swap defensive prospects. They get Sward, who's like seven months younger, and who has 73 points in 58 games in the WHL. <laughs> the Predators give up the better player and the better prospect. That's crazy. Graham Sward goes to the Avalanche. The Avalanche get... The, they upgrade their defensive prospects from Hansel to Sward, and they trade a third-round pick for Trennan. Wow, I love that for the Avalanche. They are just killing it on this trade deadline. Wow. Love that for the Avalanche. Love it, love it, love it. Very well done. Uh, anything new here? Okay, we have details on the peak trade, finally. <laughs> Joey Votto's happy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, back to... Uh, Troy Stetcher I want to look at. Troy Stetcher. We didn't break that down. That's the last trade we want to break down. Even maybe Anthony Beauvillier as well, as we're waiting for other deals, deals to come in. We're 25 minutes from the deadline. First round exit for Dallas, unfortunately, says Landon. We're not done yet. Come on, Jimmy. So Troy Stetcher acquired by the Pred by the uh, Oilers, excuse me, with a seventh round pick in 2024 in exchange for a fourth in 2027. So, okay, the, four the first pick in 2027 to be traded was probably this fourth here. So they started the uh, the movement. And that now, like, I think there's been three trades that have included 2027 picks. So there you go. 2027 fourth going to the Coyotes. They get to add to their stockpile. Troy Stetcher, defensive depth for the Oilers, a guy who was going to be on an expiring deal for the Coyotes, playing third pair minutes, third pair two-way guy. Why not? Oilers get a little bit of depth here. That's exactly what they want. Uh, good jump this year with increased ice time, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, he's getting a little bit more ice time this season. Yeah, the stars are going to do okay. Landon is just sad about uh, uh, the about them not acquiring uh, about them not acquiring any of the bigger names here at the deadline. But yeah, Nicholas, Nicholas, the voice of reason here for Landon. Troy Stetcher, am I wrong in saying he had an increase in ice time this season? Uh, no, okay, I'm right. The data, the Android brain's always turning. 14, 16. Now he's playing 18, 26 per night. So he's playing big minutes here with the Coyotes, about 18 and a half minutes per night. 
Jake Allen gets a third and Chipotle gets a second and a third. That's insane, says Landon. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. So Troy Stetcher playing big minutes. Now he can have a bit more of a depth role. Not, not like seventh D-man, but he can play third minutes, third pair minutes with the uh, Edmonton Oilers. Where does he fit in their lineup here? So for them getting uh, Carrick and Henrique, I think that was kind of like a little icing on the cake for their trade deadline. And not a crazy noisy trade deadline for the Oilers, but what they should be doing, they did what, what they should. Dumba to Tampa, exactly what I was talking about earlier. Matt Dumba traded to the Tampa Bay Lightning. That was the type of deal that I said Tampa should make. That's what I had said when we had said, what might Tampa do? I had said, look out for Tampa and Matt Dumba. Look at that. So it's it's still picking up steam, not official, but Matt Dumba will looks like he's being traded to the Tampa Bay Lightning. We'll break that down in just a moment when we're done with Troy Stetcher as we're waiting for the information to come out on that. But just to say, Troy Stetcher, 30th percentile projected wins above replacement. This year, his defensive wins above replacement, his even strength defense puts him in that somewhere like 70th percentile, which is very good for the Oilers. Where is he going to fit in their lineup? He's going to be on the third pair here. Uh, you can maybe have Dehane or Cece or Kulak come out, or Stetcher's that seventh guy who just gives you a little bit more support. But I like this for the Oilers. Uh, didn't have to give up a ton of value either, and Stetcher is a low-key Kind of like uh, a low-key solid player. Okay. So it's going to be Matt Dumba going to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's start pulling up the numbers on him. Another guy who signed his contract this offseason, a big deal, knowing that he would probably be moved at the deadline. It was one year, like $5 million, right? It was one year, what, was it 3.9? One year, 3.9? Okay. To the Coyotes this season. 10 points in 58 games on the season so far. That's Drew Vassi, our resident Lightning fan here. Let's see, what, what is the value on Matt Dumba? If these other defensemen are getting second, second and a fourth, third, third and a fourth, what's the value on Matt Dumba? Playing 20 minutes per night this season, 150 hits. Ooh, he's, on, he's, on a, he's a wrecking ball this season. He's uh, throwing more hits than ever. My goodness. Whew. Matt Dumba, 150 hits in 58 games this season, 84 blocks as well. Good physical game for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's see what are they saying over here. Uh, there you go. They're talking about it here on TSN. Finally. Conversation, please. Uh, let's uh, check in with our Western reporters across the country right now. Uh, John Lou forces in Winnipeg. Ah, they just said it like that, and then that's it. Nothing. And is uh, now by the water in Buffalo, solid ball key. These guys. So the Lightning had 2.972. So that's definitely gonna be some salary retention there. The Coyotes will definitely retain. What do the Lightning have left to give up? Like they have no picks in the first four rounds of 2024. If they give a second and a fourth in 2025, like, I don't know. They've already thrown away all their picks the last few years. Is this another all-in type year for the Lightning? Do they have the gas to get uh, to go on a cup run here? The Lightning, where are they currently? They are a, they're the second wildcard team. They're two points out of being bumped away. The Islanders are two points back of their wildcard spot and the Islanders have two games in hand. So the Lightning, yes, they have to do it, to, to say, to, like, yes, they had to do something, but yes, that's also a scary move to make. Maybe some prospects involved in well, as well, excuse me. Uh, so now you can have Hedman, Chernak, left, right, and then you can also have, who else, left, right? Calvin DeHaan, Hayden Fleury. Who's been playing on the left side here in Tampa without Sergachev? My goodness. Maybe some prospects involved. You would have to think some prospects are being involved here. Uh, or at least just one. Calvin DeHaan can now get bumped down. So Emil Martinson Lilberg can get bumped down to seventh D or something. Dumba comes in on that because Chernak can play left as well, can't he? Or even I don't think you're going to bring in Dumba to be fourth, a third pair. He's going to be in your top four. Maybe Radish. Somebody's moving out somewhere. Chernak can play up here with Hedman. Then Radish. Maybe DeHaan can play with uh, Dumba. Then Radish plays third pair with Perbix. I don't know. But definitely Dumba, if you're acquiring him for the cost that it is and you have all the injuries going on, it's going to be for him to play in your top four. Now, what are the Lightning getting back or giving up for him? Sportsnet? Let's see what uh, they're talking about over on Sportsnet. No, Harvey's commercial. Great. So I was to say Yotes are trading Dumba to the Lightning. Yeah, the, the Coyotes are doing a, you know, a nice little piece of business here. All TV stations doing the transaction special, just repeating themselves of old news. Of course, I only have said old news like more than a couple minutes here. I've been, we've been flowing for over a couple hours now. Come on, leave a like if you haven't already. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already for ongoing breaking news in the real world of hockey, our NHL 24 franchise modes and career simulations and coming soon, and MLB The Show 24 franchise mode. 
Uh, what did I want to pull up here? Uh, Lightning. And that's why the Coyotes. I want to say the Coyotes draft pick situation again here. The Coyotes draft pick situation is ridiculous. Silvatrano, still patch ready. 20 minutes left. And of course, things will trickle, trickle in over the deadline. But still some time here. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Okay, so the Coyotes. Yeah, they have tons of cap space. So no problem with the retention. Uh, look at these picks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> The next three years, they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. As of now, they have 20 draft picks in the next three years of the first three rounds. So instead of having nine, they have 20, more than double as much. What team are you choosing for your 20? When will be the show 24 series? Not sure yet. We'll do a vote, but an expansion or a relocation to Montreal is definitely up there. Spark. So players lounge here, here on Sportsnet. Like with Leafs Oilers when got traded. Oh, well, telling trade what? TSN. The trade deadline is 20 minutes away, and they're telling stories. Oh, uh, when I got traded by Craig McTavish back in 2007, I was pretty surprised. Oh, the deadline's in 17 minutes and 19 seconds, and this is what we're talking about. Uh, let's look at the Dumba card now. Look at the Dumba card from Jay Fresh. It's ridiculous. Does no one care? Sitting around the campfire, just enjoying life in the player's lounge. I wish I could be in the player's lounge. They're getting paid millions to do this. I'm doing this for free. It's pay me, Sportsnet. Anything on the details? No. Okay, and the Bolts have... Eh, okay, so there's definitely going to be salary retention. So Matt Dumba, acquired by the Lightning, is an offensive defenseman. Really? Uh, still shoots the puck, but has been heavily affected by injuries in the past several years. Not much of a puck mover and hasn't been carrying it as much this season, which was a big part of his game. So, okay, that's why I'm saying he's not an offensive defenseman right now. He's been more in that two-way game. Uh, worth a shot, question mark? So, and it's yes. Thank you, Owen. Live stream is way better than any TSN or Sportsnet broadcast by far. You know what, Owen? That's so nice of a comment. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and keep that up for a few minutes. Thank you very much, Owen. That's kind of you to say. So Matt Dumba, over the last three years, his value hasn't been that high over the last three years. The defense has steadily declined. The offense took a big jump and came back down to earth. He's playing second pair of minutes in Arizona. Again, take it with a grain of salt with the Arizona Coyotes. But just to say, not 39th percentile of even strength offense, 12th percentile. This is not a guy who's playing 12 minutes a night. 12th percentile of even strength defense. Yes, on a bad team, but I want to see some better metrics. I don't know. He's not, he doesn't have a great penalty differential either. Playing against, now take all this in mind 88th percentile of competition. He's playing against high levels of competition with low levels of teammates. So that could also play into the formula. All right, got to return Landon here. Dumba and a seventh going for a fifth with no retention. That's a good deal. That's a good piece of business. Dumba and a seven, not just Dumba, Dumba and a seventh going to Tampa Bay in exchange for a fifth in 2027. These 2027 picks, eh? So the Lightning get a seventh in 2025. So here you go. You get a seventh in 2025 to add. They have now four sevenths in 2025. They love taking back sevenths, eh? They love taking back sevenths. Um, and then it would be a fifth in 2027. So we can't even see it. A fifth in 2027 for the Coyotes here. So imagine Coyotes and Lightning right here for 2027 fifth round picks. So it's actually a steal, says Vassie. He was scared it would be Howard, Isaac Howard or something crazy like that. No, 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 no. Imagine. So you know what? That's fine. That's fine with me. That's fine by me. Both, it's a win win. The Coyotes just get to dump Dumba. Uh, deadline's approaching. Market's not too hot on him, maybe. Fifth round pick. You gave up a seventh as well. Oof. Maybe you could have gotten a fourth last week. I don't know. But no salary retention is big. Uh, the Lightning must be doing something to move things around then because we were just saying how there was going to have to be some retention going on. They're going to have to be doing some paper transactions or something. Uh, Go Bolts have 2.927 in usable LTI cap space. And them has a $3.9 million cap hit. Any chance the Jets take Chikrin? That would be tough. If the Jets do anything, Dumba's out now. What's on the TSN trade bait board now, right? If they take it, who's in another, like David Savard? I don't know. But they're definitely going to be sad to have missed out. I bet the Jets were pushing on him. Trade breakers are talking now. Matt Dumba was brought up pretty prominently. He winds up being one of the the later right-handed you to go up here. Yeah, and I got a playoff experience in Minnesota. I think Matt Dumba probably is. Oh, because of Sergeyev on the LTIR, gotcha. Years, but still a guy that 
that I thought teams would value more. At the end I, of the I day, thought that, I thought there would be some more value, Arizona, but no, no retention, no retention changes things. So it's Matt Dumba and a seventh round pick in 2025 going for the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, in exchange for a fifth round pick in 2027. And remember, they just need a defenseman. Chicken will be very expensive, though. I know TIR, and I know they traded for Anthony Duclair last night, but they still have room to take on a full So they get, they get Duclair, they get Dumba. And they don't need to retain salary, which is big for them not having to give up a third or a fourth or anything like that. Goes to show how much value salary retention has. Uh, might be playing some playoff hockey. So Dumba's cap number moves out about $4 million to Tampa. Magnus Helberg Here's traded to the Panthers in exchange for Ludovic Weber and a conditional seventh from the Penguins. A little minor deal there. Okay. That's it. If I trade picks in franchise mode that are in 2027, I don't need to feel bad anymore. <laughs> or five years away or whatever. Chikrin, Brandstrom, Savard, other defensemen who are out there. The Jets got to do something on the blue line, you would think. Who do you think won the death? Oh, yeah, Colorado, hands down Colorado. Florida's in there as well for good depth moves. Hurricanes are in there too. Where does Tampa fit in? Right now, are they still a cup contender with all that? Here's Dumba stats this season. I think Vetrano. Of those names you just listed, Rock and Pop, I think only Vetrano. Well, they can start cooking again with all the. Yeah, I don't know if Dumba and Mantha is going to say, let's start cooking again. I think they were cooking already, and now it just gives them a little extra boost. So Matt Dumba, the microstat card for this season, always find these kinds of rush defense numbers interesting because they basically mean either he's stopping you right at the line or you're just sidestepping him for a scoring chance. Interesting. So he has 98th percentile for entry denial rate, 97th percentile for possession um, entry prevention, 73rd percentile for hits. Uh, aside from that, a lot of low things down here on the exits, the exit possession rate, stuff like that. So he's not going to be leading the charge out of the, the zone here, but I do like the entries denial rate very much. This is what Tampa was circling with a big red marker right here. This is what they want to see. This is what they want to see. So that's going to be big for the Lightning on that right side defense. Uh, now the question will be, are they going to be in that same conversation of being contenders? They're in the second wildcard spot right now. So did Mantha and Dumba push them over the top to say that they'll make the playoffs, that is? So Magnus Helberg, a couple of goalie prospects being swapped there. Max Pacioretty is staying in Washington. Okay, so no trade here for the Washington Capitals and uh, Max Pacioretty. He will be staying with the Caps. So that would I would think that the Rangers are pivoting right now heavily in the final 10 minutes to Frank Vetrano. Jimmy Nil. So let's just pull this one up here. Magnus Helberg. Helberg. He wasn't. He, I think it was a. Wasn't he like a seventh, a late draft pick, maybe a seventh round pick? Magnus Helberg. Uh, oh no, I'm thinking of somebody else. But he was a second round pick in 2011, who never really made it. He's played a few games here and there. Most recently with the Red Wings, 17 games in 22, 23. This year down in the AHL with the Penguins, nine, eight, and two. So that's not it. Jack Roslevic, there's the move that the Rangers are waiting for. Jack Roslevic is off to the New York Rangers. There's that move. And the Blue Jackets continue to sell as well. Jack Roslevic, where's the news? Come on, where's the tweet? Jack Roslevic, two, there he is. Um, oh no, that's not the right one. But it's sounding like that's it. What's your source on that one, Landon? I want to hear your source on that one. Jack Roslevic to the New York Rangers as we're waiting to refresh here. Maybe in the Discord server. I'm looking in the Discord as well. Uh, oh, it's Sarah Valley. Sources are saying Rangers are acquiring Roslevic for a mid-round pick in 2026. I'm not sure why Sarah Valley's... Oh, wait, 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 was I staring at it the whole time? What's wrong with me? I was looking just at LeBrun. What's wrong with me? So Jack Roslevic going to the Rangers here. That, that's something that they were waiting for. Yeah, right in front of me. What's wrong? Sorry. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> okay, let's just quickly end off this one. Magnus Helberg, uh, AHL goaltender with the Penguins, traded to the Florida Panthers for Ludovic Weber and a conditional seventh. Weber. Weber. So 32-year-old Magnus Helberg 
in exchange for 27-year-old Weber, who is playing in the ECHL. So basically just a swap of players who will probably never see the NHL much again or ever. I'd say the higher upside for the NHL goes to Helberg. At least he's playing in the AHL and has NHL experience. This guy Weber is an unsigned player in the ECHL. Uh, sorry, he's playing in the AHL this season, I should say, but six and six. Yeah, I would say that's, uh, I give the edge then to the Panthers probably, but just a little depth move, nothing special. So Jack Roslevic going to the Blue Jackets now, acquired in the Patrick Line deal from the Blue Jackets. He now gets flipped to the Rangers a couple of years later. Yeah, for a mid-round pick, it sounds like. Vegas has been making tra traction on another big move for a player with term. We'll see if they can get this off. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Vegas has been making traction on another big move for a player with term. We'll see if they can get this to the finish line. 10 minutes to go. Wow. Keep an eye on Vegas. Keep an eye on Vegas, everyone. That's crazy. Okay, let's check it out. Jack Roslovic now off to the New York Rangers. This is a good move for them. They didn't get Pacioretty. They didn't get Vitrano, it looks like. A former first-round pick who was a big, not a big piece, but he was a piece of the line A deal that saw Pierre Dubois go back to the Jets. With uh, the last three years now, through, well, parts of four seasons with the Blue Jackets, he's been good. 45 points, 44 points. This year on pace to be that same thing. He's a 40-point guy. This is solid now. I like this. I, as, a, as a Rangers fan, says Jack, I like this. I really like this pickup. I think you should. I think you should as well. Let me pull that up here. Jack, as a Ranger fan, I really like that pickup, and I agree. Um, we'll see. We'll see what Vegas does. I don't know. To bed without supper. <laughs> Vegas to bed without supper. Oh, man. So I like that for Rosovic. In a pinch, he can be a second-line guy. He's a top six. He's a middle six forward for sure. He's, a, on, he's consistently, very consistently a 40-point guy. So let's see Roslevic. I don't I think he's expiring UFA if I remember correctly. Let's pull up the uh the uh, Rangers as well here. We'll see what the Blue Jackets get back for him. In a pinch he could play second line. Yep. The Rangers had there might be some salary retention here. He wasn't making much. Noah, sub data just came from TSN Bar Down Pod. This is the one to be on, Noah. Thanks for joining us. This is the one to be on. They're just talking about the little fireside chats. That's, come on, we're talking real news here. Trade breakers here on TSN. Let's listen to them. Oh, they're going back. In, oh, no. They're, the more Wayne Simmons propaganda. I'm sick of the Wayne Simmons propaganda on TSN. <laughs> Uh, Barabanov, Bush, Vitrano, all the guys we could think about. Yeah. So the Blue Jackets, tons of cap space. They got another pick here, another mid pick. Roslovic, he's already gone. Did Cap Friendly already update it? Look at that. Uh, no, so yeah, it's they're just talking. It's go they're going back in time. It's just they're going. There was a flashback to Wayne Simmons. Just more Simmons propaganda. Simmons found out he'd been dealt to Nashville yeah. right here watching. Is he already here, Roslovic? We, we always remember we have a lot of fun. Or is he injured? Am I looking at the wrong spot? Their lives impacted there. Wayne, you took it pretty well, though, right? Oh, he's right here at the right. top. Sorry. Yeah, I was looking I deeper see. down. Again, I'm missing things so quickly. <laughs> yeah, expiring UFA on Jack Roslovic. <laughs> Why are these? The deadline is in five minutes. A trade has just happened. Sportsnet East. And they're talking to Wayne Simmons about his history of being traded. And the what is this? Now, TSN, you fully lost me. Now, I'm I'm off to Sportsnet. Ridiculous, ridiculous. The Wayne Simmons bias. They're just slurping up the Wayne Simmons juice. Oilers are done. They are done shopping. All right. The Oilers. The Islanders also likely done. It looks like here. Missed opportunity says Marco D'Amico. Okay. They're going to recap some things here on Sportsnet. So Jack Roslevic, acquired by the Rangers, is a bottom six playmaking forward, possesses real passing skill, carries the puck with speed and transition, and loves to take on opponents one-on-one. -on -one. Hasn't been able to put the pieces together, but a real intriguing player. So look at that. The last three years in the weighted average data, 90th percentile of primary assists. That's crazy. CBJ return is a fourth. I can upgrade to a third. Perfect. So if the Rangers win the cup, they get a third. Worst case, they get a fourth. All right. Not bad at all. The Roslevic deal, not for the for the Rangers, that is. I, if I'm Blue Jackets, I would want... If, sorry, if I'm the Rangers... No, sorry. If I'm the Blue Jackets, I would have wanted a guaranteed third. But they got a fourth that could become a third. For a young guy who's done good things, a 40-point player for a fourth-round pick that could become a third at best-case scenario... 
I don't know. I think that's a bit light on the return for the Blue Jackets. They almost got fleeced for Andrew Peak, so don't tell me you're going to get fleeced for Jack Rozovic now. So yeah, good numbers over the last three years. His value has dropped steeply in the last couple of seasons, but his offense has had a great rebound. His defense is going up. It's his finishing that's taken a big dip here. That's what you got to think about. Whoa, is it Hurdle to Vegas? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that what we're Thomas Hurdle to the Vegas Golden Knights? Whoa, there's that breaking news for Vegas. Thomas Hurdle traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh my goodness, there's a player with term. Whoa. Hold on, let's get this here. The computer is struggling here. It's uh, Chris Johnson who said it. Chris Johnson has said it. Where is he? Hold on, refresh. Come on, Twitter. Chris Johnson has said it. Tomas Hurdle. Now I'm holding. Bob McKenzie and Chris Johnson are saying it. TSN. You got me back, TSN. Jay Fresh is buzzing. No, not GSN. I don't want America Says on the Game Show Network. TSN. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll get down. To, we'll get back to breaking down Rosovic maybe eventually. Hold on. Do you like that at all? <laughs> Whoa. Wow, this is the blockbuster of the day. So, in any case, you guys would know better than me because you watched a lot more hockey than this year, but Hurdles, he's had some injury issues, right? Yeah. Red Boy and Leech are in shambles in the Discord server, eh? And he had said he didn't want to review his future until after the season, but obviously uh, when Vegas comes knocking. Okay. So Whoa. Uh, yeah, the Winnipeg Jets have also made a trade. Uh, Colin Miller also going to the Jets here. Whoa, now we're getting into the flurry of the last few minutes here. Colin Miller to the Jets. A mid-round draft pick way yeah. back to Dallas. And, and, Vegas. Uh, uh, the Vegas. What was I doing? Uh, Jack, Jack Roslovic, uh, Aaron Portsline reporting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe you shouldn't have been talking about Wayne Simmons' trade history. These guys. So where is Tomas Hurdle going to fit over here? Does he go second line center? Carlson bumps down. Does he play wing and Mantha moves down? Is Barbashev in the deal going back? If the, I hope the Sharks got a good haul here. I hope the Sharks got a very good haul. The Sharks need something here. Vegas still has a lot of picks to play with. Vegas still has a couple firsts, a couple seconds, a couple thirds for sure. But it's, it's tough on the money. 5.5 million cap space. And there's definitely not going to be any retention. There's not going to be any retention on Hurdle. If he's making, uh, is Hurdle already gone? Oh, he's in, he was interested. Yeah, definitely no retention. He signed at 8.135 until the end of 2030. So that's going to be a huge deal. Alaska's coping in the Discord server. <laughs> there you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is crazy for Vegas. And of course, everyone, cap circumvention! Cap circumvention! Well, if Stone hadn't lacerated his spleen and had to get surgery to remove his spleen, then this wouldn't have happened. Whoa, pending trade call. Trade deadline is in 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomas Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle going to Vegas. Definitely some prospects being involved here. Cormier, Chaika, uh, so 13 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. The trade deadline is here, ladies and gentlemen. Pencils down, no more trades. But a lot more could trickle in over the next 10, 20, 30 minutes. So don't be scared just yet, Landon. Wow. If you got your trade call in, if you are in line at Central Registry, your trade will go down. The trade deadline is now in effect. I don't do the breakdowns of the money and how it works like everyone else does. But Hurdle, how injured is Hurdle right now? Like, how is Vegas making that work? <laughs> Cry harder, Jeff O'Neill. Cry harder. It's just excitement. And I love the fact that everyone around the league, you got people on... Jim Neal slept through the deadline. No Canucks moves, not today. doesn't look like. Uh, he's going to miss several weeks. So in February, they said miss several weeks. So they could acquire him and put him straight on IR. Is he even going to play? Maybe he'll just join for the playoffs, maybe? Three weeks ago, they said out for several weeks. Okay. So three weeks ago, they said out for several weeks. Show us the Colin Miller trade. <laughs> 
Six years left at 8.137. 19 million due in signing bonuses. It sounds like first rounders going back for uh, Tomas Hurdle. They have two, Vegas only has two firsts in the next three years. <clears throat> yeah, cry harder, Wayne Simmons. Where's the Colin Miller trade? So is Colin Miller for what? And there's the micro stat card, by the way, for uh, for Jack Roslevic for this season. The Jack Roslevic micro stat card for this season. So he's doing, the, look at that, primary assist, primary shot assist, in-zone shot assist, zone exits, zone entries. Whoa, this is going to be good for the Rangers. I like this sneaky good pickup for the Rangers and not a lot of value either. Good pickup for the Rangers late. Good late pickup. Oh, that's last year? Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't read that. But still, he's played a very similar game this season, I think. Similar production as well. That's the type of player that he is. Different numbers it'll be for this year, but similar style. I know I'm not reading. I'm I'm blind. I'm I'm just all, all I can think about is Colin Miller. Uh, my, where's the Colin Miller news? So the Jets do get a defenseman late in Colin Miller. Uh, how does Vegas do it? Tomas Hurdle. Here it is. Oh my goodness. Tomas Hurdle acquired by Vegas as a top six center who brings a versatile offensive skill set as well as defensive upside. Very good playmaker, but with the right line mates, can also be a dangerous scorer. Plays in all situations. 87th percentile of even strength offense the last three years of weighted average data. 64th percentile projected wins above replacement. His value took a big dip last season, then bounced right back. Same for his finishing. Same for his defense. Huge jump in the defense from 31st average, yes, but up above 75th now. No, we'll wait, we'll wait to see after things start trickling in. Just because it wasn't announced by three doesn't mean that it won't happen. Great work for Columbus, considering that he wasn't a regular in their lineup. True. Oh, no, no, let's talk about uh, Peak. I was going to say true due to injury for, for Roslovic, but no. Tomas Hurdle will continue to break down Hurdle as we hear the, re the return here. Oh, my goodness. What a blockbuster that is at, right at the wire. Now, when does Hurdle get healthy and come back? Probably closer to, the, to deadline time. To, sorry, to playoff time. Colin Miller, acquired by Winnipeg, is a solid uh, depth right-handed defenseman. It's not maybe the move that you wanted to see as a, as a Jets fan, but it is a move that helps out Winnipeg's blue line. That And that's that, that's what they needed. So the last three years, weighted average data, he's around that 50th percentile the last couple of years for wins above replacement. But of course, what everyone's focusing on right now is Tomas Hurdle. But here's the, the card on Colin Miller. And I think it's a good fit for the Jets. They, they have to do something. That's true. So where does this fit long-term for Vegas? You can't bring back Marsha So and Mantha and Stevenson. You know, Alec Martinez is gone this off season. Same for William Carrier. Big shot right-handed defense, but they really skate and more depth. They don't need to test the defense. The pairs work, the defensive systems work, but just in case of injury. Greg, just an insurance policy there? Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, Kevin's double payoff. Just listening to what they have to say there on TSN. So the money for Vegas longer term will be tough. If I break in, out the calculator, just breaking out the calculator, quick second. Let's get the calculator out while we wait to hear the return. 2024-25, 10 million to Eichel, plus 5.9. Plus five, plus three, plus one point four, plus point seven seven five, plus point seven seven five, uh, plus eight point eight, plus five point two, plus two point eight five, plus two point seven five, plus two point two nine four, plus zero point nine seven five, plus four point nine. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. So be quiet, Martin Biron. Sorry. Okay. Hey, no, my, my own video is making me watch advertisements now. Get out of here. So I'm trying to do a lot of things at once. Uh, Canucks don't sign. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, oh, 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 wow. It's right in front of me. They didn't sign Kessel. What? That's crazy. 
So they didn't sign Kessel, which sounded like a guaranteed slam dunk. Hold on, Thomas Hurdle here. Look in the stat card. Uh, not bad considering the, the train wreck in San Jose. It's hard to tell what he'll be in Vegas because he's had very little consistency in any regard lately. But my goodness, it's fun to play by them. Is this, is this a fun play by them? Wow. Here's the, the numbers on, on uh, Tomas Hurdle. Um, like we said, though, we want to look at Vegas's cap for next season. Uh, if Mark Stone is healthy, let's say, but it depends on Robin Leonard as well. It's hard to really calculate the ca the, the cap on, on Vegas. Is If Robin Leonard is, continues to be LTIR'd, um, Martinez is gone, can you extend Noah Hannafin now? I don't know. And you can't bring back all of Masha So and Stevenson. Stevenson definitely going to be gone, I think, at that contract value. What does it mean? Uh, yeah, definitely. The, if I'm a contender, I'm I'm scared about that one. If I'm a contender. Hurdle will be ready for the playoffs per Dave Pagnotta. Sorry, I was trying to do some calculations there, but it's just too impossible to do, unfortunately. It's going to be too hard to do those calculations, depending on the LTIR for Vegas into next year. Uh, Jack Rozovic, yeah, he got traded there. Hurdle had to waive his no-movement clause. He had six more years left on his contract. Injured right now, but will be ready for the playoffs. Uh, he was a staple there in San Jose. So let's start looking at Tomas Hurdle, aside from just the player card. Hurdle going to Vegas out of nowhere. There's always that out-of-nowhere deal, and that was it this trade deadline. A $3 million going back other way. Maybe Nikola going back the other way. Uh, they, they, there's a lot of talk about Barbashev. I could see Barbashev going back the other way, but I would think that the that the that the Sharks were not just taking back a couple draft picks. Come on, they got to think that they're doing more than just a couple draft picks here. Tomas Hurdle spent his entire career with the Sharks. First round pick back in 2012, 484 points in 712 games. Of course, since about 2018-19, he's close to that point per game range. Yeah, since 2018-19, so one, two, three, four, five, six seasons of a round point per game on a not-so-hot uh, Sharks team for the majority of that time, having the first-line center for some atrocious lines. So and to, to still have the metrics that he does with Vegas, you know what? That's exactly what we're going to do, Jack. That's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, give me a second here. Just change the screen. We're going to pull up armchair GM to see what kind of deal. Hey, Aaron, is that okay? Carlo Koliakovo is on the screen. More Leafs propaganda, I suppose, right? Um, so Habs are done as well. No more trades. So David, David Savard is staying with the Montreal Canadiens. No trade for Savard. Um, injured but ready for playoffs. Yes. Fits right into Vegas. Uh, armchair GM. As we wait for the return... There is salary retention in the hurdle deal. Really? At for like six more years of salary retention? That would that would hurt the return on the on the contract. It makes sense for why Vegas would have to retain uh to, to have a player who's retained, but why would the Sharks say yes to that? Why would they retain for six more years on an eight plus million dollar contract? We'll have to really get a lot of value here. They wouldn't retain on EK65, so why would they retain on Hurdle? It would be very limited, I would think. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, armchair GM. I don't want to create a team. I want to create a trade. Um, is this it? Fantasy Tools? Could someone direct me here? I'm blind. Calculators. Scouting. Two firsts involved. It, sounds, it would be 2024 and 2026 firsts. Sorry, give me a second. I'll find it. Uh, cap friendly armchair GM trade is what I'll do. Tomas Hurdle is getting moved, yes, to the Vegas Golden Knights, Golden. Uh, I don't want to create a team. I want to make a trade. Where do you go to create a trade? Cap friendly create trade. Trade machine. Ah, that's why it's called. Not armchair GM. It's trade machine. That's why. Thank you. Trade machine. Okay, here we go now. Commercial on TSN. Cap friendly. That's what it is. Sportsnet West. Let's see what I... What, are they talking in Sportsnet? Uh, yes. Winnipeg, when this is uh, Rick Bonus talking in Winnipeg while I pull this up. Oh, the details are in on Hurdle. Forget it. Sorry. Never mind on that. The details are in on Hurdle. It is Tomas Hurdle to the Vegas Golden Knights at 17% retained for David Edstrom, their first in 2023. Hold on. Let me let me read this from here. David Edstrom. Uh, tooth. Whoa. What? 
hits. Only one first, a first two thirds, and David Edstrom, who's a former first round pick. I thought it would have been more, but still, to retain 17% for the next six years, they get hurdle now at 6.75 million, which is astonishing. Yes, as Andrew says, six years of salary retention on a contract that you didn't have to move. It's not like it's a horrible deal. Is that the first time we've seen a contract like that get retention? Highway robbery says Owen. They give up a first round prospect in David Edstrom, who was drafted as a late first, a first in 2025, another late first, and two thirds in a year and in three years in 2025 and 2027. Wow. This is an incredible deal for the Vegas Golden Knights. You can't, you know, you almost you can't fault them. They're pushing the boundaries and they're building the best team that they can, giving their team the best chance to win every single season. Dewar, not Dewar, Dewar, Connor Dewar, Dewar. He's been traded. Is that what you're saying here, um, Jack? Well, we're going to break this down. I'm sure there's other things coming in, but we're going to break that one down a little bit more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Paper transactions there with the Canadians. Okay, they're not doing anything. TSN, back to TSN here. Let's see back to Trade Center there. And they're on commercials as well. Of course they are. Uh, as a key part of the trade from San Jose to Vegas, I, I, I'm not saying he's a nobody. Um, a first, two thirds, and hurdle at seventeen percent. That retention is really changing it in my mind. That's really that's really something. So let's see here. Um, Edstrom. So Edstrom is the big piece going back to the to the Sharks in terms of the prospects here. First round pick. Tell me we'll be fine. I don't know. <laughs> GG for Vegas. Bad trade for the Sharks. Just having ret retention for six years is crazy. Uh, 32nd overall pick back in 2023. I remember at the draft, when we had our live stream for the draft, I remember there was, was it Lucas who was from Sweden saying that he was high on Edstrom and Lin, is it, uh, was it Oscar Lindbergh? Was that his name? What was the other guy's name? There's Swede that he was high on. Uh, Otto Stenberg, that's who it was. Otto Stenberg and David Edstrom, he was high on those guys. I remember he was really high on them. And it looks like the Sharks are as well. 17 points in 42 games with Frolunda in the SHL this season. 19-year-old center, left shot, six foot two. I'm just reading some of the comments that you're putting in here. So David Edstrom, the prospect going back to the Sharks. They get a good prospect and they get three draft picks. A first in 2024. So that's good right here, right now. Vegas now with no first, no second, no first in 2025 there either. And then a couple of thirds in 2024 and 2025. So that leaves now the Vegas Golden Knights with no picks in the first five rounds of 2024. Uh, a second, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth in 2025. And a first, a second, fifth, sixth, seventh in 2026. So Vegas now has no top five picks in 2024. And only a second within the first three rounds of 2025. And uh, a first and a second in the first four rounds of 2026. Whoa. Vegas definitely going all in with that. Let's see what the trade breakers continue to say. Crazy salary retention. And then a collection of significant draft picks. The first round pick in 2025, uh, Vegas's first round selection in 23, which is David Edstrom. Uh, wow. Third Another one of their first. So they've now traded six of their seven first round picks. Is that it? Of the guys they've drafted? And that 17% is significant. First of all, it's more than $8 million in actual money that's going to go to Thomas Hurdle from the Sharks. Over eight million dollars going to hurdle for the sharks to not have to pay him, as if the sharks are trying to go all in. And what are they going to use that salary cap space for? What are the sharks trying to do? You just traded your best, one of your best, if not your best player, and you retained money. I don't get it. They move out Carlson. They move out Burns. They move out uh, um, Hurdle. Wow. Wow. Season, he thought he waited until after the season to figure out his future and sit down with the Sharks. So, it'll be interesting to find out how this trade came about. Yeah, as far good as point there, Jack. How many first round picks from Vegas actually Vegas played for them? The, the right timing, I guess, is as soon as you heard Vegas, that was probably uh, the right timing. And then, by the way, our colleague Mike Russo saying that you know, he's hearing that the Minnesota Wild have traded Connor Dewar, Dewar. to advance the trade deadline. I believe that Connor Dewar, the player in this case, has been informed to the Maple Leafs. Connor Dewar to the Maple Leafs. Hey, there you go, Leafs fans. So just, here, here's a recap really quickly for you, James, on Vegas's first round trade or pick history. Yeah, here, I was about to do this. Cody Glass, the, the three picks in the first round of 27. Cody Glass, 
Fair for Nolan Patrick, Nick Suzuki for Max Pacioretty, Eric Branster for Mark Stone. In 2018, they traded their first round pick for Thomas Tatar. In 2019, they traded Peyton Krebs for Jack Eichel. They still have their 2020 first round pick, Brendan Bersal. Their 2021 pick, Zach Dean, went for Barbershop to St. Louis. They traded the 2022 pick. It's They go for it all the time. And in this case, they hold the, the, the first round pick, right? But they, they give up, how many seconds was it? Trade? Four hurdles, sorry. Get multiple third. things going on. Two thirds, a third and 25, a third and 27 and the first in 25. And the first and, and the first in 25. And David Edstrom right. Rose yeah. Vegas is first. Well, first in 25, not 24. So, so Edstrom at first in 23 is going No, but they didn't have a first, I thought. So, yeah, this is... Uh, it's amazing how they, they had already traded there. But I guess that was conditional. So either way, they don't have first in 2024 and 2025, I believe. Maybe changed the paradigm more than any other team in the league in terms of wow. moving picks and prospects. Okay? So not the Vegas Golden have moved their prospects and moved their first. I think this is their first trade where they trade a first round pick and a player they had drafted in the first round. So Vegas trades both those pieces. Fascinating day for the Bruins. They almost traded Linus Olmark to the Kings, but it didn't cross the finish line. So just to throw that out there, Linus Olmark almost moved to the LA Kings, but he's staying put with uh, Jeremy Swayman for the end of the season here. So let's get a refresh here. So, oh, well, Linus Allmark will stay with the Bruins. Look at those numbers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, Connor Dewar going to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Allmark saved the Bruins franchise from themselves. Hurdle expected to return sometime in this regular season. Uh, so it's a first and 25. Excuse, so, But that first had already been spoken for, No. Uh, in the, well, I thought it was the Hannafin trade, was it not? Or am I, no, that was the seventh, that was yesterday, so it wasn't the Hannafin trade. Could it have been Pierre-Luc Dubois for Allmark? I don't know. Where's Vegas's first here? Vegas's first in 2025. Why isn't it showing it to me? Why isn't it showing it to me? Vegas, do a little search here. There it is. Okay, so it was the Hannafin deal. And that is the conditions, upgrades 2025. Second if Vegas wins conditions. If Vegas wins one playoff round. This is a 2026. Okay, so it's a 2026 first. And if traded by March 10th, or if the pick is top 10. Okay, so... Sorry, I'm, I'm really confusing myself here. Sorry with all that. So all that to say, Vegas has their 2024 first still. It's their 2025 and 2026 firsts that are gone. So now they have still a pick in the first round in 2024, but no second, no third, no fourth, no fifth. Sorry, it took me a second to, to get that there. I can watch later when you're done. No problem. Thank you, Crush. Thank you. Appreciate that. So Connor Dewar is a Leaf. Yes. So I thought it was a little confusing there on the Thomas Hurdle details on the draft picks. But Hurdle is going to be with salary retention. How much would it have been to buy him out? I don't think they ever would have thought about buying him out. I don't think that was ever going to be a consideration. But they now have two of their three slots used. They cannot retain salary. They After this season, they can retain salary on only one player until July 2027. That is crazy. What are the Sharks doing? I don't know about that. Mike Greer, I don't know about that. Connor Dewar, not sure what the return is going to be there. Dewar to Toronto, solid defensive forward who kills penalties, even strength of defense in that 89th percentile. His value has taken a big jump this season. So another good young player from the wild moving on there. Uh, they've Yeah, they've got to be right up against the cap floor, absolutely. Pretty solid player. I like this here. Good depth pickup for uh, the Leafs. I like Connor Dewar with the Leafs. That's nice. That's a nice pickup for Toronto. Nice little quiet move for them here on deadline day. But was it enough for their forwards? I think they did enough on defense with Labushkin and Edmondson if they can all stay healthy. But we'll see if there's enough for the forwards. Wow. Um, yeah, Dewar is good. Dewar is good. Let's go back to what TSN says. So we are 3.20 Eastern time, Alex. So yeah, we're 20 minutes after the deadline. So Mass Hurdle is never on the trade bait board, eh, Craig Button? Okay, gotcha. So here are the conditions. We finally understand it now. So... Look at this number. Look at these numbers right here. 
So you're, so you're typing a million miles now. I, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. So the Vegas first in 2025 and David Edstrom, their first round pick in 2023, Go the other so way. two third rounders go yes. for about the other way. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, Lindsay. That's okay, the Duffy. I enjoy that this has just become a communal conversation. There are no parts of the studio anymore. It's just one big group chat. Yeah, that's uh, moving that gym all over the place. I got my director of scouting back. Craig Button was my director of scouting. Trying to become a co-host, and we'll get. I need a bite here. I'm starving. Just a moment. Let's start with the man who was number one on our Hurdle and. Wait, hurdle in two thirds. What are they saying? What's Gregor saying here? Yeah, you can be excited about Allen. More stability. All the different parts to go offensively, but he is a really what I would call underrated defensive player as a coach. And Rick Bonus has really got the Winnipeg Jets playing in a manner where everybody's embracing a two-way game. Tyler Let's pull up that Jay Fresh card again on the fits seamlessly for the Winnipeg Hurdle. Jets. So it's not just what he adds. Vegas is definitely going all in here for back to back. For Kevin Shovel Day off, I think he's been completely targeted. Number one with Sean Monahan and now with Tyler Tafoli. Okay, you want to move to Thomas Hurdle now? Well, unless you want to go to Evgeny Kuznetsov. You sure? You're talking about Kuznetsov. The Hurricanes. Is Why are you talking about Kuznetsov? Well, should we ask the panel who they want us to talk about? Should we turn it back to the Hurricanes? I think you want to talk about Kuznetsov. No, the Montreal Canadiens got a third round pick. That will become a second if Allen appears in 40 games next season for the Devils. That's what they got. And, and that's a game changer. And now that Diddy Kuznetsov, Jeff O'Neill talked about it earlier, you don't need him to change his game. You just need him to get back to what he wants. Like My computer's struggling here. I'm sorry about this. And we know what he wants. An elite player that can impact the game in a really significant manner. So that's what the Carolina Hurricanes are banking on. And if they get that, that just makes them a stronger contender in the Eastern Conference. All right. Well, you mentioned strong contenders. Look no further than last year's Stanley Cup chance for the Vegas Golden Knights. Now he gets back by Thomas Hurdle. Uh, came down to the wire, Craig, just with a couple of minutes ago go. before 3 p.m. What do you think of that one? And literally off the board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> literally, was, yeah. We didn't have him on the board. You, you know, we talked about Thomas Hurdle and Thomas Hurdle, healthy Thomas Hurdle. He, he's that big, heavy, skilled player. Wayne Simmons talked about, you know, the of course, Wayne Simmons knows. So you think about how well the Vegas Gold Knights play. They did it with skill, they did it with speed, but they did it with weight, leaning on opponents. And the game now becomes so hard come in the playoffs when you're playing another good team, trying to wear down a team, wear on them, lean on them. That becomes a real challenge for opponents. Thomas Hurdle, Anthony Mantha, Noah Hannafin, that just adds to that group. I would add one more thing. <laughs> I hear you, Vassie. That's going to be a hard one. <laughs> so they got that flexibility with Carlson as well if they want to play Hurdle in the middle. Right. Right. Real quick, I'm noting that, amazingly enough, with some roster manipulation, they could activate Hurdle at his reduced salary during the regular season. With what's left, well, they take you know they get twenty guys on the roster, they send some guys down there. They could activate Hurdle with his salary. They don't have to wait to the playoffs. It'll yeah, be fascinating for next year with his salary. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, next year's salary, you think Martinez, Stevenson, Marshall, that's thirteen uh -huh. million dollars. Hurdle at six and a half. Yeah. And Hennepin at seven and a half, that's thirteen and a half million dollars. Is basically a wash. Yeah. Math is not our problem. It's theirs. No. So if you were to keep Hurdle and Hannafin. You could still be able to keep the same Vegas squad minus Machasso, uh, Martinez, and Stevenson. It sounds like is that what they just said? Is that what they, I think what they just said? Yeah. So here he is, Thomas Hurdle. What an acquisition for the Vegas Gold Knights. Uh, a top six forward, a top line forward. What has he done? He has been a 35 goal scorer. He has been point per game, hovering around point per game for the last six seasons now. Dealt with some injuries, absolutely, but still. New Cap Compliant video. That's not going to be easy. That Cap Compliant video is not going to be easy to do. I'll try my best, but once the EA, EA roster comes out with the trade deadline update, I'll do my best. David Edstrom, Sharks fans, should you be ex excited about David Edstrom? Yes, I do believe so. Let's pull up some, uh, let's pull up the Dober prospects on uh, David Edstrom so we can say a bit more on him. Uh, as we're cl getting close to finishing up the stream now, probably in the next half hour or so, I'm not sure if there's any more deals to come through the pipeline here. Let's see, David Edstrom. Uh, page does not exist. Of course it doesn't. These guys. Hi, Edstrom. Wow, 
I think a breath after that one. Uh, they have Adam Edstrom, not David Edstrom. Why? The page now disappeared. Of course it did. I'll look at elite prospects then. A first, two thirds, and a late first round pick prospect. So essentially two late firsts and two late thirds for your one of your best players in franchise history, the best player on your team. And you got to retain over $8 million over the next six years. You're going to pay him over $8 million over the next six years to play for us instead. That I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the Sharks did that. Not that they moved Hurdle, but for that return. Like Jake Gensel got a better return. Is Jake Gensel a lot better than Tomas Hurdle? I don't, I don't know if it's that much. But okay, Gensel got a second that can become a first, not a guaranteed first. And they got three prospects and a roster player, a good roster player. The Sharks get a better prospect probably than any of those three, maybe even with Koivinen. Two late thirds and a late first. Is that so much different? And Gensel could just be a rental. Vegas gets him at 17% retained for six more years. Now, that's a huge, huge win for Vegas. That meme of uh, that, that Breaking Bad meme, he can't keep getting away with this. That's exactly what uh, Vegas is doing. Crazy. Not just for, forget the cap circumvention and the LTIR. How do they keep getting away with these trades? Other GMs are just letting them get away with these. Man. It's a fourth for Dewar? Okay. Edstrom is a sneakily good in almost every facet of the game. Is sneakily good in almost every facet of the game. He's made in the mold of a big two-way center, but also provides a lot of value offensively and at times even in transition. He's also a solid distributor of the puck, both in the offensive zone and on the breakout. He supports his defenseman down low, reads passing lanes, and covers space while handling his puck battles with care. Wow, here comes a Sharks fan in here. What new team should I support? Sharks fan 1997. I'd say for this season... Call yourself a free agent for right now. And for now, I'm going to give you, I bestow upon you, congratulations, the Florida Panthers bandwagon. A fun team, hot weather, good squad. Go with it. Why not? I have now put you on the Florida Panthers bandwagon. <laughs> that forward from the Minnesota Wild, uh, 24 years old, a former fourth round pick of the Wild. Um, oh, sorry, comes for a fourth-round pick in 2026. So the Leafs give the Wild a fourth-round pick in 2026 for Connor Dewar, who was a third-round draft pick in 2018, 92nd overall. For the thoughts on that, let's turn it over to Gino and the boys. Gino and the boys. Are the Leafs winning the Cup now with Dewar? Well, I don't know now, Gino. I don't know. I'm not sure. His natural fit would be a third-line center. But there's currently a guy that... May know a third-line center. He's going to play the fourth team, line. Which be there. So a panther shark. There you go. New species. What panther they, shark. What do they do? What do they do? So Tomas Hurdle, this guy, he has not been getting any much, you know, I, I wouldn't see many votes for any awards here. That doesn't mean that he hasn't been doing well. He has an 82 game average in his career and take all of his injuries into, into consideration. 82 game average of 56 points, but remove the 25 and 37, the 31 and 82, the 46 and 81, the 21 and 48. Remove his first four or five seasons. Just look at the last six years. His 82 game average is much closer to that 70, 60, 70 point range. So he's a guy who can definitely score a lot of goals. He's going to be a fantastic addition to the Vegas Golden Knights long term. It's sad that it will mean likely moving on from one or more of Marchasso, Martinez, Stevenson, the great team they've built in Vegas. But give them Hannafin and give them Hurdle on long term contracts. I think they'll be able to live with it. I think they can sleep a little, uh, they can sleep all right. All right, Sharks fan. Perfect. You're a Panthers fan until the offseason, and then you can decide. Yeah, can we check the Leafs draft picks in a second? Sure. No problem. I just want to quickly update this. So Dewar, Dewar goes to the Leafs for a 26 fourth round pick. 30 minute warning. Why is it a 30 minute warning until the deadline? It's been 30 minutes since the deadline. What are you saying, Dave Pagnotta? Ah, there he deleted his tweet. <laughs> a check plus grade for Vegas. Uh, where am I going? Toronto. So let me just, well, I'll finish up on Hurdle and then we'll get to Dewar, Dewar and the Leafs in a moment, Golden. Um, so San Jose moves Connor, uh, Tom Tomas Hurdle. It hasn't updated here yet though, eh? No, not yet. So they have a couple thirds in there. No, it hasn't updated just yet. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. Okay, let's go indeed to Toronto then. So the Maple Leafs pick up Dewar. 
to play some bottom six minutes. We looked at his metrics before. He's a valuable guy in a two-way role, defensive depth, uh, defensive depth forward. Uh, I wouldn't, I'd say that might be it for the trades. Yeah, I think that might be it for the trades. We'll continue to break it down and then we'll call it a day. I can't wait to relax a little bit tonight and this weekend, hopefully. I, I feel so up to my eyeballs with trades. We'll be live again tomorrow night with Starfleet, but for uh, trades, I can finally take a break from those. And yes, remember the cap. That's true, Joshua. Good point. The cap will be going up, but still, they won't be able to resign all three of those players with uh, Masha So at 5.5 and Stevenson at 2.75. They all need big upgrades. So the Maple Leafs now, uh, was that the fourth here? No. What did they trade? I guess it's not in yet, eh? I guess it's not in yet. It was a it was 2026. Sorry, it was 2026. Yes. 2026 fourth going to the to the Minnesota Wild. So now first, uh, well, no second, no third in 2024. No first, second, third, or fourth in 2025. And no second or fourth in 2026. That's what you should, would uh, keep note of. Yeah. Awful news. <laughs> so the Leafs draft pick situation is definitely getting uh, getting lower and lower. They have a couple firsts and a third in the next three years of top three draft uh, top three rounds. So uh, now looking at the Minnesota Wild, they did a lot of uh, uh, they got a lot of picks here with the Maroon deal and the Dewar deal and the Duheim deal. The Minnesota Wild now, looking at their uh, draft pick situation, they get a bunch of depth picks here. So now they have a couple fifths. They have, in, in 2024, they have what's from Bo a conditional pick from Boston that's going to be a depth pick. A fourth from Toronto that's going to be here as well. So they have Toronto's fourth in 2025 and Toronto's fourth in 2026. That's interesting. From a trade from, what was this trade? February of 2023. What trade was this? Of course, I won't bring it to me, right? Toronto. What trade was this? I'm gonna. It's gonna eat at me now. What trade was this? Could he, I don't know. Stevenson. He's he's worth what he's worth. Did I not see it? Oh, they, oh, it was from a different team. Probably they probably got the fourth from Minnesota in a different deal. Oh, okay, so let me look at it a bit differently now. Sorry, let me focus a bit more. I'm not focused. Uh, Chicago fifth. And it's from. Oh, again, I'm looking at it in the O'Reilly deal. Great. Okay, I'm blind again, and just <laughs> the brain's doing a lot of work today. Sorry. Thanks, Jack, for uh, helping me out there. It was in the Orion O'Reilly deal. That's how the. Uh, how the um, how the wild got that pick? I still can't believe the salary retention though on Thomas Hurdle. I cannot believe the salary retention. Who's the the Stanley Cup favorite after this deadline? <laughs> Man, two veteran D who did not end up moving: Tyson Berry and Tony D'Angelo. So Dewar goes to the Maple Leafs for a fourth. We looked at his metrics already, and the numbers breaking him down a little bit. Knowing Vegas, they'll trade someone as a cap dump, maybe. Vegas, well, I'll be very curious to see how Vegas continues to operate. Let's see if the, anything is updated here for Vegas. No, it doesn't look like it, eh? Not just yet. Whew, so trade machine we can close. Did we break down all the trades? Did I miss any here? Let's go back to trade trade uh, trade tracker here on Sportsnet. The giant three hole with uh, McMahon and Yonko, I, I thought they were playing really well and dominating most of the play. Of course, they're only going to talk about the Maple Leafs and Dewar instead of uh, Tomas Hurdle and the, and the Golden Knights, right? They've been really good together. The winner of the trade deadline is Tomas Hurdle, who saves $6 million in taxes. Wow, what a day for him. He's celebrating at home right now. As my, but I'm sure he loved his time in San Jose as well. He was the guy there. But he goes, you know, going from the worst, one of the worst teams in the league to one of the best. I don't think you can be too, too unhappy. Yeah, this was really quite the deadline, eh? Turned out to be something. So Markstrom, the three-team deal with Lindholm never went through, stuff like that. This, these guys, this is wrong. They, delete this TSN. Look at what TSN did. Hurdle in two thirds for uh, Edstrom and a first. Come on, come on, TSN, wake up. Are the people are the people saying in the comments? Great players 
trading places today, but you probably put a greater impact if you would have just focused maybe on one transaction instead of three. It feels like they were fiddling with the dials to change the station, and all it's just fuzzy now. Yeah, Bruce, do you think this is just... And again, I suppose it's possible there might be something else from Toronto. I don't know if they, we've <laughs> everything keep it up. There's nothing else that is. Well, we're 36 minutes after the day. Can you put an updated this graph, please, TSN? Game. We believe we have a chance here, but we're not going all in this year with this roster. Is that the statement? Well, to me, they, they certainly didn't go all in. There was a, they're know, still just talking Maple Leafs, eh? Sportsnet East. Has anything else similar gone down being recording the hurdle reaction? Sportsnet East. So, I mean, it's, uh, no, nothing, Vassy. Uh, but I think they, Sportsnet they East. And, and stronger. May I have to yell into my into my? Uh... Did that perspective come into the picture, especially with the assets we've already given? No, up? that's not the trade. Yeah, I, I think that's something we're always uh, looking into, and, and for us, that's not. Hold on, don't get me scared here, Jack. That's not the, that's not the trade. I'm the Sharks did not give up two third round picks. The Sharks did not give up two third round picks. No, okay, no, they didn't. They didn't. No, 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 they didn't. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the Sharks, I was saying, they did not give up two third-round picks here. What are people saying in the comments? On the third one in San Jose? Yeah. Can't be. With that retention? It can't be that you're getting a first, a prospect, and that's it. And you're, you're giving two-thirds and you're retaining salary? No. All right, let's recap these last two trades as well that happened. Uh, Connor Dewar went to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a 2026 fourth round pick. That's a nice deal for the Maple Leafs. I think I'd, uh, he will join their cast well. Marchessault is loyal to Vegas. He'll take a bargain. I think if anyone does, it's Marchessault. It's Stevenson who probably goes to free agency. So Dewar, nice little pickup for the Leafs. Good depth guy. Solid on the even strength defense metrics in that like 80th percentile the last three years of weighted average data. I like that. Uh, and then Colin Miller. We didn't really look at this one too, too much, but only a 2026 fourth going to New Jersey for Colin Miller. So a nice little move there by the Winnipeg Jets. We didn't get to highlight that one too, too much as the uh, hurdle deal was coming in, I believe. I don't think any other trades will happen. I don't think that'll be it. We'll wrap it up here in the next probably like 10, 15 minutes. I don't need to go exactly to four o'clock. We'll wrap it up soon. So Colin Miller comes in on the right side. Samberg, St uh, Stanley, those guys can kind of move out. Your top four probably stays the same, but I like this very much for the third pair in uh, Winnipeg. So Colin Miller comes in to do exactly what the Jets needed, and it was right at the deadline as well. Fans were starting to get a little bit scared. A lot of Millers who have played in the NHL, huh? I should have put Colin Miller. There you go, Colin Miller. Leave a like if you haven't already, ladies and gentlemen, to finish it off, and subscribe if you haven't already for breaking news and analysis for the trade deadline, the offseason, the draft ahead, franchise mode, NHL 24, career simulations, much, much more. We'd love to have you join the team here on the channel. It's a great time. Thanks, to everyone, for being in the chat so far today. So Colin Miller, he was with Buffalo. He went to Dallas. Was that a signing? No, he was traded for a fifth. Uh, yeah, so he, he was traded to New Jersey for a fifth. And then the Devils, good little ROI. They trade a fifth to get him, and then you get a fourth to trade him away. Why not? Thanks for the eight points and 41 games you played. Salut la visite. Goodbye. So there you go. Colin Miller for a fourth. New Jersey gets a little bit of something back. What does this mean for New Jersey's blue line now? Because Nemich was injured, wasn't he? New Jersey. The way the initial tweet is written has third under Hurdle's name, which makes me think Vegas gets them. Hold on, that's scaring me now. I need to see the official full trade here. I'm getting scared. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Miller wasn't really playing much anyways. So there you go. Excess value for the for the Devils. Uh, the Jets now, their salary, their draft pick situation. Dallas done. Jim slept. He just woke up. His alarm was set for 3 p.m. He woke up. Uh, so they gave up the fourth here in 2025. Yeah, okay. No, not this one. It was a fourth when? 2026? All these years. 2026 fourth. Yeah, Cap Friendly still behind here. Good hanging out with you today, man. Got to go work on the vids in Russia. Of course, of course. Vasi, thanks for being here so much, my friend. Appreciate you. Hope to see you for the live stream tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, San Francisco Starfleet 2028 playoffs. Get excited, everybody. So that is a 2026 fourth. Okay, so uh, Winnipeg still has Montreal second and their own fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. In 2025, they still have 1st, 3rd, 5th, 6th, 7th. And in 2026, they have all their picks except for their 4th. So there you go. Uh, rebuild the deadline for the Stars is no big deal. Yeah, they, at least they got Tanev, but yeah. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks, Fassi. So that's for the Winnipeg Jets. 
Now the Devils added 2026 fourth to their uh, to their to their stockpile here. There you go. That's their third fourth in 2026 now. Add in a Winnipeg fourth right here. What are the Devils trying to do? What are the Penguins trying to do? What are the Capitals trying to do? A lot of fringy teams in the Metropolitan Division. I wouldn't be surprised if the next team that we take over for our next NHL 24 franchise mode series is one of those Metropolitan teams who are pretty fringy. We did the Penguins in NHL 23. Now I wouldn't be surprised if we do the Devils, the Capitals, or... Um, or uh, yeah, the Devils or the Capitals. Sorry. I wonder what the details would have been about the Omar trade. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder what, the, what those details would have been. Uh, Mark Edward Vlasic in tears. Poor guy. Is this tweet still up? Hold on. Is this the, is this the trade? Is this... Hey, Mr. T. Hold on, Mr. T. But oh, I just got it by email. Mr. T with the 1782 USD. Wow, Mr. T. Thank you very much for the donation, my friend. Always best to do it through the PayPal so I can get as much as possible of it. Wow. Thank you for that very generous donation. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. It's going to go directly towards the chair purchase, which I've already made, and it'll be the show 24, which is going to be purchased within the next couple of weeks as well. Thank you so very much. It's adding to the ability of things that we're able to do in the channel. I appreciate you, Mr. T. I pity the fool who does not appreciate Mr. T. So hold on. Is it uh, two-thirds? Uh, I'm getting a little scared here. Two-thirds. And Mike Greer is being uh, publicly, like, tomatoed, publicly tomatoed in San Jose. If He, go he gave up two-thirds and the best player on his team retaining over he's going to pay the best player on his team over 8 million dollars over the next 6 years to play on, on a division rival and he gives two thirds to take back a late first and a prospect who was drafted with a late first so two late firsts in exchange for two early thirds so I, like picks 30 early thirds are what one to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90. So let's say, for example, two picks that are uh, 32 and 32 received in exchange for two picks that are 95 and 95, and you give up your best player and pay him $8 million over the next six years to play for a division rival. What? Hold, I need, I need clarification. Taking back the two thirds is fringe enough, to, but to give two thirds? Hold on a second. <sighs> Whoa. Can I need to get I need to get details on this? On TSN everywhere it says Vegas gets the thirds in the hurdle deal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Could DeBrusque and Grizzlick not? Could they net Boston a first round pick on draft day? Eh. Together. Together, yeah. I think the LA first, yeah. TSN? Let's go back to TSN here. Are they done talking about Wayne Simmons and Connor Dewar? Yeah. Uh, it's the yeah, Vancouver has a press conference going. Yeah, I, I think that's something we're always uh, looking into. And, and for us, as I said it before, it's just not uh, – I'm actually trying to work every day, uh, not just for the last day here. Um, and I think that's where we always try to be ahead of things. And – and even getting players in earlier, so even the Joe Valeno pick, adjust, yeah. Uh, we we felt when we uh, go back to before the, we started the season with Lafford to get some more speed in. Uh, looking when we, we we needed Sedora, we were a little bit banged up there, uh, and being in Altair as well, we need to move in order to facilitate the trade for us. We need to move player a player out to to get a player in. So obviously that. That's a tougher. So, uh, Patrick, you mentioned a couple of forwards that have come off from Abbotsford and got a chance to play, but in the playoffs, you're likely going to need some depth on defense. What are you seeing down Abbotsford uh, for some defensemen that might be able to step up in that role? Yeah, I think it was a good uh, step in the right direction here for Brees Bar. Very happy for him. He worked hard during the whole year and, and for him to uh, get medical cleared and be assigned uh, uh, to start playing down there. I think. Uh, Guys like uh, Jet Wu, uh, McCourt, Jet Wu. Uh, Philip Johansson, they all... Calgary has a trade in the queue? Okay, so there could be another deal going here. On Sportnet, it says that Sharks get the two-thirds. On TSN, it says that the Golden Knights get the two-thirds. So which one is it? After all 
Are Vegas getting two thirds or are the Sharks getting two thirds? Yeah, I guess you need another uh, partner in order to make a deal. And, and uh, as I said, which one is it? <laughs> uh, we were even talking to teams that uh, made uh, their players available. Uh, but so, sometimes uh, the fit is not there. Um, and uh, as I said, I didn't want to risk. And I, I, I feel that the, the Flames are getting Nikita Oktiuk from the Sharks. Okay, the Sharks made another deal here. Okay, Oktiuk going to the Flames here. Uh, yeah, Flames are grabbing Nikita ok Okotiak from the Sharks pending completion of a trade call. Gotcha. Flames and Sharks making another one here. I need to know what's going on with those third round picks. It's already a bad enough trade. If the Sharks also gave two thirds, I am going to have a fit. Not on my behalf, but on behalf of all Sharks fans. That is crazy. So as we've discussed many times, Doug Armstrong confirms the team will explore extending Bushnevich. I never believed the team was looking to trade him in the first place. So there you go. Bushnevich does not move in the end. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets extended. Uh, yeah, he. Was, I remember... A, 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 oh, 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 let me uh, re rephrase myself. Uh, Akotiak. Akotiak was in that um, Timo Meyer trade, I believe, right? Yeah. Akotiak. Akotiak. I spell that right. Uh, there you go. Nikita Hotokiuk, former second round pick, 23 year old defenseman, eight points in 43 games with the Sharks so far this year. Came over from the Devils in the Timo Meyer swap. Uh, okay. Those third round picks are breaking my head right now. Absolutely. My positronic brain can't take it. I can do millions of calculations per second, but come on now. So Akatiuk, he's going to be um, on, the, on the Flames blue line now. I'm not sure why the Sharks wouldn't want to keep him. Why can't you? Like, do you, don't feel, do you feel forced to move him? Not sure why. Uh, what are they going to get back for him? Young depth defenseman. I don't know. I don't really see the reason in trading him. Um, is he on an expiring deal? Yeah, but still, he's 22. He's done okay on a bad team. Uh, yeah, so here's Nikita Okotia going to the Calgary Flames. Not sure why the Sharks want to move him. Another move is making me scratch my head about the Sharks. I'm getting angry here. I'm not even a Sharks fan. I'm getting angry on behalf of the Sharks. I'm getting angry here. Uh, yeah, he's, he's an RFA for sure. At 22 with that experience, yeah, he's 20, He's going to be an RFA. So let's keep listening to um, the uh, Canucks conference here. Way of hockey to play to be successful. And, and again, we've shown it up to this point. Uh, are we pleased or satisfied? Not, not at all. I think there is another level, and I think our players are learning that as, as I said, going through the adversity here. So uh, I'm excited for the game tomorrow. Patrick, there was a thought. Sorry, Lord. Patrick, I'll be the general manager of the Vancouver Canucks, Elias Lindholm, the big move they make, which was a while back now, in 2024, first, and Andre Kuzmenko, who's done well so far in Calgary, to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And of course, Lavushkin and Joel Edmondson both done before deadline day, and today they had a lot of coping. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I was looking at the Discord server for a second. A lot of coping on the Discord server. If you want a place where hockey fans are always talking hockey, baseball, football, fantasy sports, um, franchise mode sports, the Discord server is the place for you. We're over 600 members in there. The link's in the description. We'd love to have you. It's a great conversation, wholesome time, a little bit of slander, but a lot of wholesomeness. It's it's all in good fun. We'd love to have you in there if you haven't joined already. Um, I wonder what the return would be, though, on Akotiuk. I wouldn't think it's very much. I don't know. Third, fourth? I don't know. Uh, press conference now with the Leafs GM, um, Trelving. Fishing on the penalty kill, two areas, you know, a, a specific area that we wanted to see if we could help ourselves with. Um, if it's too it quiet, let me know. It gives us more depth in the middle. How, it, how we've talked briefly here with Sheldon over the course of today, but – you know, a lot over the last few weeks of areas that we'd like to address. And uh, that's where we think Connor fits in with us. He's a guy who's he's defensively sound. He's a very competitive player. Um, and hopefully he can help some kind of kill. Did you reach the uh, out of the court as Brad, the defense core with Russell Billy last evening and Joel yesterday to your uh, like Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. Hey, listen, there's... It's, it's going to continue to be a work in progress, right? It's like everything else at the, at the, at the trade deadline. There's certainly some things we looked at. Um, 
you know, we've talked at length of trying to improve ourselves on the right side. Um, you know, we were excited to get Joel. You know, Joel comes in, he's, to me, he's a big, long, rangy defenseman. He, he adds length, he adds physicality, um, he adds experience. Um, yeah, there's a lot of coping around the Discord server. There's a lot of tears in the, from the Sharks fans in the Discord server right now. Some heavy, heavy coping going on. You know, we've got a number of guys back there. Um, how it all fits with pairs and partners is we've got some Thank options, you. but certainly excited to get Joel here yesterday. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kane is a guy that we our guys have been tracking a lot. Um, you know, not just this year, but even prior to that. Again, um, there might be a theme here. He's a he's a long he's a long defender. I know people may look at his stat line. Um, he's a defense first guy. He's a big. You know, he's a big body. He moves well, um, moves the puck well. Um, but his calling card is defending, penalty killing, um, those types of things. So, you know, he's a guy who's a little bit further along in terms of his development. Um, and like I said, Chris Bork really deserves a lot of uh, work on this. This is a guy, he's, he's tracked hard um, when, when, you know, the opportunity came to, to acquire him. We did, and, and obviously we're looking to, you know, he's, he's with a real good, team and, and hopefully they go on a long run at BU and then hopefully we can get them signed up. How do you characterize the market overall this this year compared to other years? I don't know if it's any different. Um, you know, like I said, there was there's there's been there was a lot of activity leading up to deadline day, which is not unusual. Um, but I you know there's there's lots of conversations. There's conversations that you started now that you continue into the summer. Um, lots of activity. Um, so I would I would categorize it as a as a as a normal as a normal sort of leading up to the market. Sorry, how much of what you did the last did or didn't do the last couple of weeks is predicated on who you might play in the first round? I, listen, you're trying to make your team better in the ways that you can. Um, you know. Wow, in this course, server is saying we got. <laughs> and your small incremental moves, and that's what we're trying to. In the Discord server, what are we seeing? Discord service says we got a fine deal. Speaking of coping, hold on. There's something else I got to do here. Well, sorry. We'll let the all press conference fine. keep going. Um, you get in. They're all good teams. Like there's, there's. You're playing a good opponent where whoever you may play. But our first goal, we, we got some work to do yet, and we still got 20 some odd games to go here, or whatever it is, 20 games to go um, to earn the right to get into the playoffs, and that's that's goal number one. How do you assess your team? The way Brad Freeland being the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs again for fans of the other Canadian teams, we've heard from three now. We'll try to get the other four throughout our last hour here in training center, assuming they do all speak. So for more on what the Leafs have done here in the deadline period and what they didn't do, Mike Johnson and Craig Button. Craig, it was a middling kind of trade deadline period for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're a good team with great players, with Stanley Cup aspirations. Should they have done more? Could they have done more? What's your take? The answer to both of those is yes. Should they have done more? Absolutely. If you see yourself as a Stanley Cup contender, try to position yourself as best as you can. You know, adding players like Thomas, Thomas Hurdle like says on Sports Dad says that the thirds are going to San Jose. You know, that, that helps you deeper down in your lineup. But the significant areas where the team needs help sure, to really go on and, and, and be a, a serious contender, they weren't addressed. Now, is that a question of should? Couldn't you can do whatever you set your mind. We don't want to hear about couldn't. Yeah, we're Vegas in the league. We don't talk about couldn't anymore. You can do whatever you want to if you're willing to go down that road. And I think for the Toronto Maple Leafs, it should. Okay, what is it? Is it the where are the thirds going? I need to know where the thirds are going. what you need. Whatever it is, I need to know where these thirds are going. It's Chris Tanev, this guy you really want to get, you have to get. Then maybe you got a package. TSN says they that San Jose is giving two thirds. Sportsnet says that San Jose is getting two thirds. Which one is it? But not enough to maybe give the Toronto Maple Leafs an edge in a top first round playoff series, likely with Boston. Maybe and by the way, it's for a fifth. I didn't say the Akotia trade is for a fifth. The Sharks get a fifth back for him. And be in a much better place. Bigger is the key word here. And Chris Tanev, there's no GM in the league that knows Chris Tanev better than Brad Trigler. Right. There's no GM in the league that looked at his team and said, I need, don't, I need a right shot defender. 
and he could have them, right. and he didn't get them. So that's a case of the general manager, to me, not being able to address the single biggest need on his team. That would be... An so those are the fifth in 2025, most likely, I would think. Fifth in 2025. He has the team to warrant that kind of commitment. Going to the Sharks. And that's what I call the top two pairs of defenders, right? So now you're going to start to evaluate. He knew what he needed. I don't think it's a case of him saying, well, maybe that team isn't good enough. Because at the end of the year, if they don't go deep, we're going to hear the same thing. We believe in the core as they should. The core didn't get re They had no. So the, the Sharks had no year. fifths for the next That's three years. Yeah. So no fifths for the next three years for the Sharks. So they now get to recoup. They have one from the Penguins. They have one from the Flames. There you go. They get a little uh, little fifth round pick back. As soon as we find out where these third round picks are going, we can call it. But we're closing on 4 p.m. here. I want to start thinking about wrapping this baby up as we're an hour past the deadline. What a deadline it has been. Um, so nine teams did not make a trade on deadline day. Four of them were Canadian franchises. Wow. Blow my mind. Um, so Forbort, Forbort was placed on LTIR, which allowed for Peak to be fit in under the cap. Um, yeah, it's the fifth is to jumpstart the rebuild. Absolutely. Give up two thirds, if, potentially. Why did San Jose do that? Not sure. Young defenseman who just offers nothing but uh, continued development. Not sure why you're giving up on him at this point. Calgary just really wanted him, I guess. And maybe the Sharks weren't high on him. But hey, Sportsnet East. Let's go back to Sportsnet and see what they're doing here. Uh, yeah, the the Leafs I conference is still going. Things, uh, Thanks, Landon. You know, over the course of time. Um, you know, over time, I've learned not to get too surprised. Uh, Marty, at, at, at trade deadline, you, you, you know, there's always, there's always some things that maybe raise a few eyes, a few eyebrows, but um, I wouldn't say I would be caught off guard. I was surprised by when you took my step. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. So there, there is Leafs general manager Brad Trey Living uh, tying up some loose ends. He likes uh, depth. He likes the depth of this Leafs team. Uh, Hockey Central trade deadline presented by Bet365. Lots more coming up. Okay. Hockey Central trade. We'll pause that for a second. Wow, more Wayne Simmons talk coming in, eh? So I'm just in the Discord server. I want to. <laughs> Given that safety and your best player in team for six years in exchange for two picks at 32 overall. Trying to do a lot of things at once here. The coping, the copium in the Discord server is at an all-time high. Oh boy. So we're just waiting on that. Let me refresh the Twitter here. I was uh, away from the screen for just a second. Um, the Vegas Golden Knights have acquired Thomas. So it looks like even according to Complete Hockey News, Vegas are getting two third round picks. What? How? You're giving a first and a prospect who's a first round pick. So Edstrom was drafted 32nd. Let's say Vegas wins the cup. For, not even. They lose in the first round. It's pick 22, whatever it is. Vegas gives picks 22 and 32 across two drafts in exchange for picks 95 and 95 across two drafts. And San Jose's best player, who the Sharks will pay $8 million to over the next two years to play for my team instead. How is this possible? Yeah, 23 and 25, technically. I don't get it. What are the shark? How does this make sense for the sharks? How does it make sense for the sharks from a just a business point of view? I understand the 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 fact that Thomas Hurdle has been dealing with injuries, and yes, it's a big contract that eventually you want to get rid of. But why don't you keep him while he still has? He's only thirty. Play him while he's 30, 31, 32, 33. Play him in those years. And then if you want to trade him away and retain salary, even 50% for the last two, three years, fine, so be it. But the retention isn't even the biggest thing. I'm saying you're giving away two-thirds on top of that? No, no, it can't be. It can't be. If you gave Hurdle at full contract, that would be one thing. But to retain salary for six years? No, there's, there's no way. 
there's no way that this makes sense for the Sharks long term. I don't care what their plan is, full rebuild or not. Hurdle was going to be wasted because we'd rather have Bordalo and Eklund, all these guys. Fine, trade Hurdle. But guaranteed there'd be a team, A, I bet who would take Hurdle at full contract for less value. Or B, would take Hurdle at retained value, but give you more than, uh, than not give you more, but <laughs> my brain's all over the place. But would be able to make a deal without you giving third round picks, is what I'm trying to say. The 17% retention would have come eventually, I suppose. But he was two years into this extension, just completely tearing down everything. Carlson, Burns, Hurdle, all retained salary. You can, you're can you retaining salary on two of those players until July of 2027. Three more years of retaining salary and two guys who aren't playing for you. And you move down. All you do for, for that is that you move up 60 picks. You move up 60 picks in two different drafts. You move up two pick, 60 picks in two different drafts. Um, and that's fine if his value wasn't as high. But why force a trade where you're essentially losing? Why force a trade that you lose? Are you that desperate for the trade right now that you need to get Hurdle out because that contract is so bad? You're telling me that you wouldn't be able to find something. You can retain more salary. You have to give up a, maybe you have to give up a pick down the road, but no, it can't be that you're looking that far in the future. When he's 35, it might be a hard contract. Yeah, but he's 30. He's 30. He's not 35, 36 yet with two, three more years. He's 30 with six more years. Can't be. <sighs> My rant is over, but still, I, I understand. Maybe he wasn't as, as, um, as valuable as people thought. Maybe his maybe I'm saying maybe his value shouldn't be as high. Maybe I'm I'm overstating his trade value, but I'm definitely not overstating the fact that you don't need to make a move like that so early. If he's 33, if he's 32, 33, 34, and he has two, three, four years left on his contract, I understand, okay, we're looking towards the future. We're trying to see what we can do. But it can't be that six years out, you're looking into the future. Well, this might hurt us in 2036. So we're going to trade him now and essentially just get back, move up 60 picks in two drafts. But it's going to cost us $8 million. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like that's it, though. We got room for both of you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. How many teeth in your mouth, Jeff? 32, baby. You know that. We did that at the Toronto show. Of course. Come on. 32 and you're going to. So the new oh, oh, Do you want to just talk about the Calgary? Uh, you, I, yeah. Kevin Rooney, one-year extension. Uh, yeah, you need a new tongue. He's yeah. going to the tongue shop after this one by a new one. Nikita Ahochuk of the San Jose Sharks is now a member of the Calgary Flames. A fifth-round pick going the other way, I believe. Again, I always kind of get a little funky saying this. It sounds like that might no be... No trade in 40 minutes. minutes. So I think we're going to go ahead and call it there, ladies and gentlemen. No trade in the last 40 minutes. San Jose defense going to Ooh, so I didn't mean to end it on such a uh, an angry rant there against the Sharks. I love the Sharks. I've always been a big Sharks fan, but for Mike Greer, no. Mike Greer, that this trade was not it. This trade, Mike Greer, was not it. So ladies and gentlemen, just over three and a half hours of coverage. Uh, no, no extension yet from Hannafin. Three and a half hours of coverage. Thank you for joining. Leave a like if you enjoyed some of the coverage. Thank you for the couple of donations that came in as well. Thank you for the love throughout the entire stream. We'll be live for another big coverage when it comes to the draft. But until then, we'll be live for breaking news analysis, breakdowns of the postseason as well. We'll be a lot of the real world of hockey. So if you enjoy the trade deadline, you want to hear more hockey content, subscribe for that into the postseason. But on top of that, we have the NHL 24 series franchise modes career simulations and they'll be the show 24 as well um i mean yeah my brain's getting a little fried on that one so just to recap some of the big deals of the day quickly as we end it out right here thank you everyone for being here tomas hurdle to the vegas golden knights Ra uh, jack roslevic to the new york rangers matt dumba to tampa bay lightning andrew peak to the boston bruins uh looking just the bigger ones jake allen to the new jersey devils jason zucker to the nashville predators uh, Kyle Poser to the Panthers, Pat Maroon to the Bruins, uh, Tyler Toffoli to the Jets, uh, Kuzn Evgeny Kuznetsov to the Hurricanes. Those are the deals for deadline day, ladies and gentlemen. It was a fun time. Thanks for being here for the coverage. Now, what will these moves mean for the league? I look forward to running some simulations and doing some uh, some things on HL24 with it. So make sure to subscribe to not miss out on it. Join us in Discord server for fun 
you know, all in good humor slander in, when you're talking sports, but also to be able to talk hockey, talk fantasy, talk uh, franchise mode and much more. Discord server link in the description. Thanks everybody for being here, whether you joined for a few minutes or for the last three and a half hours. Much love to you. Thank you so much. Or else I'm just talking to myself, right? So thanks for joining in on the converse on conversation. Uh, speaking of cones, I wanted to get Slim in on this one, actually. Slim was invited to the stream, but it didn't work out with his work. But Slim will join us for a live stream someday. Slim Shady, just chilling. He will join us someday soon. Can't wait to see what he has to say about these Sharks deals. Thanks, everybody. Take care. We'll be talking live uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern on Saturday for our next San Francisco Starfleet NHL 24 expansion series simulation. That is going to be on for the 2028 uh, postseason. I know that was big news. Slim was coming in. He's coming in soon. All right, everybody. Have yourselves a wonderful start to the weekend. Enjoy. Relax now that this is being taken care of. I know that I will. I got Star Trek waiting for me tonight. Have a great time, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here. So much love to all of you and appreciation. I'm glad that we could do it for another trade deadline. We'll see you again next year. Thanks again and talk soon.